Hello and a warm welcome to the National Ice Centre in Nottingham for the final of the British ice hockey season. It is the Elite League final and a chance for one of two teams to make history. The Cardiff Devils can complete the four trophy Grand Slam with victory over a Sheffield Steelers team who are trying to win their 10th playoff title, which will equal the record of the Murrayfield Racers. So Andrew, this is what it's all about. The opportunity for greatness, a grand slam. How are you feeling right now? Good, yeah, we're, uh, we're prepared, we're focused. I think, uh, I think we're feeling a little better than yesterday. The later start helps that. I think the one o'clock just, uh, for whatever reason, hasn't been great for us the last two seasons, but we clawed it out and, uh, you know, one game here, here we go. Against your arch rivals in many respects, Sheffield, you've got a lot of respect for them, they've got a lot of respect for you. In some ways, when you were drawing it up, if you were going to win a Grand Slam, would this be the opponent you would have picked? I think so, yeah. I think, uh, I think it's the only way it's got to be, really. Um, at the same time, you know, what a test it's, it is going to be. Uh, you know, they're playing great hockey right now. Their depth is awesome. They're very well coached. They have a ton of experience. Um, you know, and these games are always uh, epic between two teams. So I think it's going to be a great showcase for the league, and uh, I'm very excited to be involved in it. On your own part, do nerves play any part in it for you? Uh, maybe a little bit, but I don't know. As a competitor, as a as a pro, you want the, this is what it's all about. You know, you don't want to miss the playoffs or be a whatever place team. This is why you play the game. And uh, you know, if you're not feeling a little edgy and maybe a little bit nervous or whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, you're probably not human. So. Uh, very, very excited. I know the guys are uh, pumped up, and I'm sure it's going to be uh, quite the game. Where's it going to be won? If Cardiff are going to take the title, what's the one thing you've got to absolutely execute on? I wish there was one thing. There's, uh, there's so, so many little details in this game. And as we've seen in the, in the titles we've won over the last couple of years and the titles that we've lost, it all comes down to, you know, little details. Maybe it's a face-off misalignment, uh, you know, not executing. Maybe it's a defensive zone, uh, you know, lack of communication, missing an assignment there. And, um, you know, it, it could be any little thing. But uh, I, I do think a start is absolutely critical. Uh, we need a much better start than yesterday, and we need 60 minutes. Uh, and those are absolutely vital to our success tonight. Who's your leader? Who's the one that's going to make you tick before you go out there? Oh, we got a bunch of them. Uh, you know, it's it's a real collective group here. Joey Martin, Andrew Hoth, and when they're going, they're really leading the way. Joey Haddad protecting the puck down low, being a big body. Uh, you know, Ben Bounds with the big saves he's made over the last couple seasons in the in the crucial games. Uh, you know, and the list goes on. So it'll be by committee, uh, like it always is. Take me into that locker room then, just before you're going out. What what are going to be the final thoughts? Not much. You know, we've, we've done our meetings. The guys are sick of my voice by now. And uh, there's not much you want to do uh, right before. I'm a big believer in just, you know, trying to be in the moment and not overthinking the game. I think, um, you know, a lot of coaches, even in my past experience playing for them, you can, you can get the guys overthinking right before the game. And, uh, no, we'll, uh, we'll try to keep it fairly loose. And, uh, you know, again, let's focus on that first face off and go from there. So, Paul, back here again against a, a very, very good Cardiff side. Just give me an idea about how you're feeling in yourself and how your team's feeling right now. Good. I mean, any time you make a final, Seth, you should be feeling good about yourself. And, uh, you know, it's the last game of the season, and it's, uh, it's a one that we, you know, hopefully if we come out the right way today, that you take all through the summer with you. And uh, big occasion, special event that we have here, and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to it. It's been a while since you've had the chance to be in, in, in the big game. What are your rem memories of, of last time? Well, we, we got into a couple of finals in Coventry. Obviously, we won it when we won the Grand Slam there in Coventry. But, you know, I'm with Sheffield now. And, we, we, you know, we're excited to be here. We want to be here. We believe that we are the best two teams over the year. 
And, uh, you know, they've, they've won the league, rightly so. They were the most consistent team. And, you know, they won the cup. And, uh, but there's another trophy to play for today. And we're pretty eager to uh, change their fortunes around. I know it's won on ice. But you talk about the history of the game. Cardiff have got a chance to make history. The first team to win all four trophies in a Grand Slam in the Elite League era. You've got Sheffield with the opportunity to win a tenth playoff title, which would take them level with Murrayfield for the all-time number. Does that play any part for you, knowing that there's a great big history of the game there that you can play a huge part in here? Not really, no. You know, we, just, uh, we just want to win. We want to win a trophy and we want to win for our fans. We want to send them home happy, you know, and we want to go home happy tonight. But whatever the result will be tonight, Seth, will be we'll give everything we've got. And, uh, and that's all I can say. That's all you can do in sport. You've got to go prepare the best you can. And, and if we win and all the records that come with it, well, so be it. Fabulous. But uh, winning is the most important thing today without everything else that goes around that. What about injuries? You've got a couple of players with, with bad knocks yesterday. Matthew Wah blocking a shot. Uh, Zach Fitzgerald blocking a shot. How are they? Yeah, we've got a few, but uh, I, I suspect everybody has this time of the year. And, you know, them kind of blocks and, and, and you know, we ate a lot of pucks yesterday and we, we had to. Uh, so there's a few injections going around right now to freeze guys up in certain areas to get them through today. But they're warriors, you know, they want to they wanna contribute today again. And, uh, and it's not just them guys, it's others. But I dare say Cardiff have got the same problem. But that's playoff hockey, that's the way it is. You, uh, you sacrifice your body for your club. How do you win this? How do you change around the performance of the Challenge Cup final? That last league game, if you like, even a little bit to a certain extent, the performance of last night to make sure you're more than equal to, to what Cardiff do. It's, it's, it's all about winning. You know, I don't care about the performance. I mean, last night we knew that we had to play a different style. We knew that uh, how they would press us and forecheck us yesterday. But I thought we were really solid in the middle zone. I thought we didn't really let them inside. But, uh, you know, they're fast. I mean, I, I think Belfast are possibly, from Christmas onwards, the best team in the league. I mean, you know, and, and we, uh, we had to do what we had to do to win the game. I want us to manage the puck a little bit better tonight. I think that was something. But that was down to their forecheck as well. But we've got to take our chances. We've got to stay disciplined. This is a team that's hurt us with their power play. And uh, we have to, you know, I hope the referees carry on with the same vein of thought that you know they're letting the players play I mean and uh, there was no hooking and holding and clutching and grabbing yesterday it was just speed and hard and physical and I hope that stays the same and if we stay out the box we stay disciplined and we take our chances on the power play today you know, we've got every chance. What's the mantra going to be before you send them out if you're going to give three key words for a Sheffield Steelers winning performance what will they be? Well we, we you know we got together early August it's been a long year let's uh, let's finish on a high and uh, we've been knocking the door all year, but not quite there. Let's, uh, let's knock it over today. The atmosphere here at the National Ice Centre in Nottingham is absolutely pumping. The Sheffield Steelers already out on the ice for the final game of the domestic British ice hockey season. What's on the line? Well, of course, for the Sheffield Steelers, it's a chance to win a 10th playoff title. That would make history. It would take them level with the Murrayfield Edinburgh franchise, who've won 10 times since the beginning of British ice hockey. As for the Cardiff Devils, well, in the Elite League era, they want to become the first team to complete a four-trophy Grand Slam. They've already won the Earhart Conference title, the Challenge Cup title, the league title. Can they add the playoffs to that little mix alongside me for the commentary? It's the man who's played for the Sheffield Steelers. He also has captained the Coventry Blades to a grand slam, scoring the winning goal. Ashley takes Ashley, when you look at this game, we're not too far away from face-off. What do you feel are going to be the three most important points for the two sides? Uh, net minding, obviously. Um, net minding yesterday in, in the semi-finals was really good on, on you know for all four teams, um, hence the low scores. I think possession is going to be huge, um, and I think it's. Talk about coaches will talk about blue lines and the boards. If you win the boards, if you win the blue lines, you've got to be strong. Like. Stop teams gaining easy entry um, and make sure you're, you're clear in your own zone when you get chance. Um, it's about keeping it simple. And I think it's talking to Ben O'Connor before the game. He said their meeting was, he's, you know, we've played each other that many times. We know what they do. They know what we do. It's about who executes the best and makes the least mistakes. 
Well, the Cardiff Devils beat the Sheffield Steelers to win the Challenge Cup. They won the league title in Sheffield. This is a rivalry that has gone through the season. The respect between the two teams is massive as well. Does any of the baggage, any of the history of the regular season and the other matches you play against one another come into today? I don't think it does. I think, um, you know, teams, the priority, you make the playoffs. And then once you're in, so, you know, we've just got to get there. And that's kind of was Dundee's mentality yesterday. And now today, you know, the rest is it's his, it's history. It's whoever's hot today. Um, you know, as, as I've been on a team that, that was, a you know, a very low seed coming into this. And, and we we got good for two weekends and we came away with the, play, with the, the playoff trophy. So... It's about who's good today and, and the rest of the season doesn't doesn't matter. Well, the Cardiff Devils know that this could be a very, very special weekend for them. Since the turn of the millennium, they've never won a playoff championship. Since the Sheffield Steelers won their first playoff title back in 1995, Cardiff have only won it once. Sheffield have gone on to win it nine times. There was a changing of the guard in 1995, and now, some 22 years on, could there be a changing of the guard again? The two teams ready to respect the two national anthems that will be played. A few boos for the Sheffield Steelers, Levi Nelson, who wasn't expecting this. Fine tingling stuff at the National Ice Centre. It's England against Wales. It's Sheffield against Cardiff. It's the last two league champions as well. Cardiff winning it this year, taking the title from the Sheffield Steelers. Ashley Tate, who's going to win it? it? It really is too close to call. They've been neck and neck all year. Like you just said, Cardiff have... They've won those games that have mattered to get them over the line, but this is, um, like we just said, it's a one-off. Who blinks first? I'm going to sit on the fence. <laughs> well, I think you're the only person that might be sitting anywhere right now. This building is absolutely pumping. Let's go ringside and our reporter, Owen Bradley. This afternoon, the uh, atmosphere down here is just as good as it is up there, gents, let me tell you. The uh, rink is packed, even with Nottingham Panther supporters disappointed, and their team aren't here. Always interesting to see who they were going to support, but there's no doubt today. They are anyone but Sheffield. They want the Devils to do what they couldn't do a couple of years ago and complete that four-trophy Grand Slam. I mean, Ash was talking just a little bit earlier. There is really nothing between these two teams. The Devils have maybe edged the head-to-head -head series all season. 
but you just wonder if Paul Thompson, looking steely on that Sheffield bench, might have something up his sleeve for this one. The referees, Dean Smith and Toby Craig, they're the men in charge so much falls on their shoulders and after a season that spans all the way back to the first week in August, it comes down to three periods of hockey. So who walks away as the champions? Will it be Cardiff completing the Grand Slam or will the Sheffield Steelers be the party poopers? We're underway at the NIC and Sheffield have possession. In their own zone with Jace Coyle. Uses the boards to get it towards neutral ice. Armstrong holding up. Looking for an option. Saric will skate onto it. This potentially will be the final game in his career. He retired at the end of last season. He retired after Champions Hockey League. But coming out to help the Sheffield Steelers following the signing deadline in their hour of need. After the Champions League and he said he retired, he said, no, I've sold my skates. <laughs> and then I spoke to him again, he said, no, I'm really selling them this time, so... Will he do that? The Cardiff Devils, though, got so many players. You look through the all-star teams and the team of the year, but the Steelers break two on one. Here is Armstrong, he's got Wah with him. Armstrong to Wah, Wah, can't get it out of his skates up. Net goes off his mooring. And now there's going to be a big set to right in front of the net. Armstrong runs through Ben Bounds. You can listen to this on Five Live Sports Extra. You can watch it live on the BBC Sport website. And right now on the replay, Armstrong makes the move. And what does he do? Well, he just seems to run straight into the goal. Yeah, I think he's watching what he's watching his pass. Or a great chance for Sheffield early on, Obman Rush. And uh, Fournier gets beat on, on the Sheffield blue line, but makes a, does a great job getting back into the play and gets a stick across. Just gets enough of the puck to throw Matthew Waugh off. Well, the fans are on their feet in this building. There was an incident in the quarterfinals where John Armstrong fell into a netminder and it resulted in the end of the game for Nottingham Panthers, Mika Vickman, who was taken to hospital. I think there's a lot, there's a lot of pressure on the referees to make the right call. With... What is the right call, in your opinion? If he's going to call, I think he's got to call... Uh, it's going to be even. I think it's going to be even. I think he's going to get Armstrong and Lewis. Ben Bounds is up on his feet. The referees are huddling in here. This is where the four-man system is different. Two linesmen. And two referees. They talk it over. They make their decision. And it looks like it's going to be a power play to the Cardiff Devils. There's only one gate open. Still nil-nil. 36 seconds gone, and John Armstrong is going to go to the penalty box. And if that's a goaltender interference, it's hard to disagree on that. Accidental or intentional, yeah. he runs through the goalie. Yes, yeah, so it, it's one of those, it's six of one half a dozen of the other, but uh, contact's made and... and the form of the referees this weekend has been that, that's a penalty. So a power play for the Cardiff Devils, it's nil-nil. It's been an all-action first 36 seconds, let me tell you. Sheffield will clear all the way down the ice. Cardiff in the white shirts, looking for that fourth trophy of the season. They have such a good power play with Hoffman. The player coach, Andrew Lord, in possession on the boards. Steelers will try and rip it out of the zone, and they do that successfully. As 30 seconds of that penalty now have expired. The first quarter killed, but Joey Martin will bring into the zone again. Falls back towards Hotham. Space now for Richardson into the glove of the Sheffield Steelers goaltender. Irvin's Mustakovs, and he hangs on to that one. I think Sheffield doing a good job not letting Cardiff set up. They kind of the chance came on the rush more than anything. And uh, if they can kill like they did yesterday, get in shot lanes, keep Cardiff to the outside, um, they'll get through this. 
80 seconds of five on four advantage for the Cardiff Devils. Ben O'Connor will flip this the length of the ice. That's a shot on goal. As Ben Bounds, his GB teammate for Cardiff, will just corral it to the side. Now Fournier opens things up. Steelers can nick possession back again. It's kicked on. Here's Debian. Debian, a scorer of big goals, driving to net himself, is taken down. No penalty called on the plate. Fournier brings it back for the Cardiff Devils. Over the blue line, and the Devils will set up again. Under a minute of power play time for them to try and make something happen. Debian once and twice, and he clears down the ice. It's been a good penalty kill so far from the Sheffield Steelers, but they still have 40 seconds before John Armstrong will return. Cardiff with Haddad. Scorer of the opening goal in the semi-finals for the Devils. Marcus Nilsson will get there. And that will be sent down the ice again. And Cardiff will try and bring it into the zone. Hotham with a spin and a turn. And now they have space. Shot comes in, they score! Opening their accounts on playoff finals weekend. Guillaume Doucette. And the Devils lead by a goal to nil. Nice play by Andrew Hotham. Getting over the blue line, just, just pulls up, creates some space. And I'm not sure if it was on a change. Doucette comes into the zone late. And... Uh, Picks the bottom corner, may have took a deflection. Um, but yeah, you know, Sheffield all pretty much did a really good job there. They didn't give them much chance to set up, but you know, most of the chances came on the rush, as did that. So Cardiff lead by a goal to nil. Two minutes and 20 seconds into this one. It's the start that they would have craved. It was the start that their head coach, Andrew Lord, demanded. And it's the start that the players have delivered. And Sheffield better hang on tight here because Cardiff are going to come hard. They know that Sheffield, at times this season, have been shaking. And they know that they could get two and three quite quickly. Yeah, I think it's important Sheffield come back with a couple of good shifts here. Get, get the puck deep, get to work, um, and get some offensive zone time. Valix. Sends it behind the back of the net. Cardiff will come away, though. Fournier rips it round the boards, goes behind the back of the net, caroms off. Hard hit on Bentavoglio. Andrew Lord will collect. Hard hit again, both by Rod Saric, setting the Sheffield tone physically. And now clearing away down the ice. Gleason Fournier collected and then went to his defensive partner. Now dancing in. It is Lewis who scored that crucial backhand goal for the Cardiff Devils. Steelers don't clear their zone again, though. They're finding themselves a little bit trapped in here. And Saric can clear away again. It's a double clutch on the puck, and Armstrong, who took that penalty, battles out there. Cardiff in possession with Haddad. Loses out now, Steelers can break. Two on one, it's with Armstrong. He's got a man with him, scores! Armstrong, top corner! Tied just like that. Exactly what they want, a quick response. Uh, neutral zone turnover, Sheffield jump on it. And good for him, you know, I'm pretty sure he was feeling bad. He took that penalty, Cardiff scored, and uh, the same guy gets them back on level terms. The shot, short what? side and high. I wonder if he had uh, Bounds guessing a little bit there. The last, the time he had a two on one, fake shot made the pass this time. There's no way he was passing that. Breathless. Three minutes, 52 seconds in. Cardiff Devils won. Sheffield Steelers won in the Elite League playoff final. Let's go ringside, Owen Bradley. Incredible start for both teams in this final, and you can feel it down here. We'll grab a word with Daddy Kearney in a couple of minutes. One of the Cardiff forwards not involved uh, this afternoon. And he was uh, thrilled with the only goal, as you'd expect. But Sheffield, you were looking for them to get a response, and they come back with it. Armstrong, the man who uh, would have felt awful at being in the box without an uh, opening goal for the Devils, the man who was able to step up and respond and make it 1-1. What a start. Five Live Sports Extra from the BBC, and the BBC Sport website bringing you the Elite League Playoff Final. The quest for a grand slam for the Cardiff Devils. For the Sheffield Steelers as Ben O'Connor shoots, rips all the way around the boards. Now, Andrew Hotham behind the back of the net, spins away from his man. Brian will get it clear. 
And it's a chance for the two fourth lines to get out there. Interestingly, Joey Martin centering it, the superstar for the Cardiff Devils. Steelers just make the play at the blue line and give possession back to Cardiff. A little touch pass, doesn't quite find its destination, and now Jonathan Phillips brings it in. Phillips going to wind up, shoots a stick save. Jared Hagos was driving to the net, couldn't get a piece of it. Sheffield hard off the boards again. There's a, a fall as they go to the bench. Not sure what that was all about. Could be a break in at the other end. It's Myers driving hard to the net. He's absolutely hammered into the net. Jace Coyle blasts Matthew Myers right through the numbers. I think they got tangled up a little bit, but um, interesting. There's you know, the referee shaking his head and saying a no call. I don't think this is a call. He gives him a pretty big shot there. Yeah, he gives him a shot and Myers kind of misses him as well, so. Five minutes and one second gone. Cardiff Devils won, Sheffield Steelers won. Equality in the game. Devils took the lead early on. Irvins Mustakovs, the Sheffield Steelers goaltender, beats it. But then the Steelers responded. Matthew Up Myers asked to leave the face off circle. He doesn't like the decision. Culligan against Dow. Won by the Cardiff Devils, Matt. Fournier flips one through. I don't think Mustikov saw Didn't that at see all. It, no. Cardiff gain possession down low in the zone. Trying to work the puck behind the net. Now they go high to Fournier. Shot will come all the way through again. What did that hit? Deflection and post, I think, but. Um... Sheffield steal it all the way down the other end of the ice, 200 feet from their own goal. And now Cardiff trying to break away. Well cut out by Anders Franson. And Gleason Fournier, who's an ever-present on the puck, whenever he's on the ice, he just demands to have it. And he, he's back in possession again now. His pass cut out again. The active stick of Anders Franson, and it loops up into the Sheffield Steelers bench. What an opener it was from Cudicet on the power play for the Cardiff Devils. And then the Sheffield Steelers made the most of their little break, still at centre ice, and then John Armstrong finishing off. Franson sends it down the right side. Bounds out to play it. Bentavolio finds Martin, good skill by Martin to find space. Now, offensive zone, Cardiff in again. Working this one, back door takes a deflection right away from Bentavolio. Cardiff still working this one deep in the zone, and now Matthew Wah has it. Armstrong again, looks up the ice, he's only got white shirts ahead of him. So he takes it wide on the boards, he's hammered by Josh Batch. Good check by the GB man. And now Cardiff will try and step clear. They've done well here, Cardiff. A partial three on two breaking. Batch into the zone, gives it back, and the shot into Irvin's Mustakovs. Batch driving to the net. I think Batch should have taken the shot. I think he had a better, better lane and a better angle, and uh, maybe, maybe felt the need to give it to his coach on the wing a little bit. Let's go down ringside then, Owen Bradley. I'm alongside Devils forward uh, Danny Kenny, not involved this afternoon. Um, you've been feeling every hit and every shot and every save down there at ringside. What have you made of it so far? Yeah, no, I mean, it's an exciting uh, rivalry and uh, it's fun to watch. You went in front, it disappointed to see Sheffield level so quickly. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna transition well and uh, that, was a, that was a big goal for them. You look dangerous every time you're getting it in the zone. What are your team doing so well out there offensively? Uh, I mean, I think they're just trying to get traffic in front and uh, if the goalie can't see it, he can't stop it. So I think that's the key to our success. Danny, thanks for your time. Cardiff creates another turnover. Good stick from Ben O'Connor, takes it away from Joey Haddad and then he finishes on his map. It's a hard blast against the board. Steelers just about clear the zone. But Andrew Hotham will bring it back, and this is what Cardiff do so well. When you clear the zone, they just come back on you, they force you, they make it so difficult. It makes it really difficult on the defenseman if they can't get up and, and, and close the gap, and all of a sudden they're coming back straight down, back at you, and, and there's no respite in that sense. Steelers go up the middle, a deflected play into the zone. After it is Luke Ferrar, oh, he's taken hard into the boards. The arm doesn't go up as a shot will come, that's off the glove. 
was Jonathan Phillips. Steelers captain again fires this one, and that's saved by Ben Bounds. Two chances for the Steelers skipper, who is breaking a record himself today. This is appearance 634. And he has two great chances. It's a huge hit. That was the first chance, and the second one, both saved by Ben Bounds. Cardiff bring this one into the offensive zone, it's ripped away again. And now trying to work it back to the blue line. They have it with Richardson. Such a calming presence on the puck. Cardiff again now. Can Levi Nelson get goal side of his man? Culligan plays it ever so well, but Dowd will collect. Robert Dowd on the left side. Dowd working the net, fires this one in. And Bounds is just strong enough to stay tight to his post. But Sheffield looking to create something here. Banked off the backboards. Levi Nelson, net comes off its moorings. And the face-off will stay in the zone, and a push, and a shove, and a grab of the jersey. As Richardson and Nelson and Hotham all gather together. I think chances are pretty even up to now. I think Cardiff had maybe a little more sustained pressure in the zone, but Sheffield had really good chances on the rush. Um, interesting on face-offs, though. Like, Cardiff won a couple of offensive zone face-offs, and that's where they got their sustained pressure from. Just shows you the importance if you can win draws. And you can keep teams in their own end, or you can clear clear the back end and then uh, get out of the neutral zone. Armstrong in the face-off circle, wins it clean, finds Franson, who will take it deep. Right wing corner, Franson behind the net, feeds it out front, what a chance, great save! Rebound comes Steelers way, then whoa, another good save! The puck is still alive, no whistle. And then they do decide it was above the level, but two grade-A guilt age chances. The first, though, wonderful. The second miss, an absolute... Oh, Bob, crossbar. Crossbar. I thought it was a save. Again, one, one face-off, sustained pressure, and, two, again, two really good chances. <laughs> we thought this game was going to be too tight to call. It's pretty wide open right now. That all came from that face-off play as now. Here's a chance, Fitzgerald tipped out in front with a good save, Ben Bounce. He's made two or three good ones in this first period. And the Steelers, for me, they've had a better first nine minutes of this game than they had 60 yesterday against the Belfast Giants. A 1-1 hockey game on five live sports extra and the BBC Sport website as well. You can watch the game if you like. You can listen to the game wherever you are on the BBC Sport app. And we're delighted to have your company. Fournier gets this across, it's a bobbling puck, shot goes in, rips around the boards. Caram's back in to the defensive zone where Gleason Fournier with a twitch of the head directs traffic. It's forced backwards. Walker on the forecheck. Cardiff in possession with Batch and eases it to Fournier who then Ignores the puck, leaves it behind the net for Josh Batch again. Sheffield going to this 1-4. They sit deep in the neutral zone, and, and that's why Cardiff go offside there. Sheffield just made it so hard to get through neutral ice that Cardiff had nowhere really to go. No, just, just stepped a second too quick, but... Um, interesting breakout. Cardiff... Sending a high guy trying to stretch the zone, and then and then Elmer coming late, little drop pass, trying to you know back Sheffield up onto their own blue line and create some space and speed through the neutral zone. Cardiff trying to move over the blue line, they do just that. Brian though loses possession. Lord then will have a shot. He sends it in. Bordalo can't get there, and Sheffield will clear their lines. Only as far as Andrew Hotham, though, and the Devils have it back in his own zone, and Hotham getting caught in possession by Phillips, who's ratting around. He's putting the pressure on, and Cardiff will just fire down the ice. And the Steelers will send out one of their more offensive lines here against that fourth unit. So you say fourth unit, I think, obviously, Sheffield are rolling four lines. Cardiff would like to roll four lines, but they're only using 11 forwards. They're, they're sending 
Martin, Lord, Bentivoglio, they're, they're double shifting with Brian and Bordalo to make up the fourth line. Um, I th the fact that Dundee only went three yesterday really hurt Cardiff's rhythm and, and um, you know, the first 10, 15 minutes, that's, that's where they struggled to get into the game. Over 10 minutes gone in this one, Cardiff won, Sheffield Steelers won. It is the Elite Ice Hockey League playoff final 2017. As that hits the linesman and disrupts play. Steelers nearly sneak in with Robert Dowd, though. Cardiff can clear away again. And if Cardiff had the first five minutes, Sheffield have certainly given as good as they've got over the next five. Valix taken into the boards. Blind pass. Aslin will intercept. And now here is Joey Haddad. Takes it wide, puts it in on his backhand side. Saric there first, moves it quickly to Robert Dowd. And the red line will float this one towards Ben Bounds, who plays it quickly. Lewis steps out of the corner. Again, Dowd goes in there. Nelson goes in there. There's a, a tumble and a scrum of players as they end up intertwined on the floor. Yeah, I think you had it right. First five, Cardiff. Second five, Sheffield. Great, great pushback from them. Um, especially after, I think... Sheffield, well, Cardiff learned less, yesterday's lesson. They, they came out the blocks really well, which they struggled to do yesterday. And Sheffield, same. They've sustained pressure, but today, once they've once they've cleared the zone, they've got out and have to lose pucks, and, and they've been able to get some of the pressure, offensive zone pressure of their own. Armstrong at the second attempt wins the faceoff. Fournier will move forward. Fitzgerald will bank off the boards to Armstrong again. Sheffield in possession. Trying to surge through neutralised, but Cardiff doing a great job there. It's Doucette holding his line, making it difficult. And now they have possession with Lewis. Banks one off the boards himself, but Steelers have it back. And they have to go all the way back behind their own goal line with Zach Fitzgerald, who has a really nasty lump on his knee after blocking a shot yesterday. Not too sure how he's moving as freely as he is. That's called adrenaline, I think. <laughs> I don't think he was going to miss this one. We'll head down back ringside next break in play. But here is Walker. Bit of speed. Here's Debian. Goes the other side and comes off the board. Steelers don't hold at the blue line. They tried as hard as they could. But they couldn't quite hold it in as the shot zipped all the way back round. Let's go back down to our man, Owen. I'm down at ringside. I'm joined by someone who's not involved this weekend. Nottingham Panthers forward Robert Lakovic, who's popped in to take a look at things. So one all with eight to go in the first. What do you make of this matchup, Sheffield and Cardiff, Rob? Uh, it's a big one, obviously. Two great hockey teams going at it. Um... I mean, it's 1-1 one, one already. I'm sure there's going to be more goals here. What's it like to play against these two teams? What are their strengths? They're just solid teams all around. There's four lines of good hockey players. So, you know, you can't take a shift off or someone's going to get punished. And I think that goes, that's the way the game's going. It's just hard hockey. It's good to watch. You played it this weekend many times. You played and won this final many times as well. What will the players be feeling out there? Um, I... I think they'll be thinking that it's just another hockey game and they're both capable of winning, so don't put too much pressure on themselves and try and get the result. Ashley Tate, who's on commentary, says it's a bit like a circus when you come to this weekend. Can you enjoy it at all as a player when you're involved? Yeah, it's a lot of fun to play in. Um, obviously, unfortunately for us, we're not there, but it's just a great atmosphere. You, you never regularly get seven, 8,000 fans in the arena fans from all different teams, it's, it's good to be a part of. Just to put you on the spot, who's going to win it? I hate to say it, but I think Sheffield. Well, thanks for your time. Robert Lakovic, GB International, and was part of the playoff winning Nottingham Panthers side of 12 months ago. Here's Guillaume Debien. Gives possession straight back to the Cardiff Devils, though, and the dangerous Andrew Hotham. Hotham. Floats one in on net, takes a deflection on the way through. Ulmer back with it for Cardiff. Offensive zone, Hotham moves it quickly to Richardson. The two defensemen for the Cardiff Devils, always active. Now Haddad. Turn and shot, that's uh, all the way across the face of goal. And Steelers should clear away with Jonathan Phillips. They do, only as far as Mark Richardson again, and Cardiff back in possession. The Steelers nick it back with Jared Hagos. Hagos will send this one in and Ben Bounds hangs on and 
Steelers get themselves an offensive zone face-off. It's Cardiff 1, Sheffield 1, 6.48 remaining in the first period. Ashley Tate is alongside me, and you were a Grand Slam winner. Talk to me about the pressure of trying to go for a Grand Slam. Do you feel it as a player? I think in the, it's hard not to I'm saying not to feel it. The, more of the chat and the talk about it is kind of from the outside in, but it does come up in conversation. But it's you know, as I said previously, sportsmen are very very superstitious, and you just can't talk about things like that. But beforehand in the build-up, yeah, it's 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 there. But once you're in the game, and, and as Lacko just said, it's it's um, it's just another game. You, you're into it. Um, your feet are moving. Hopefully, you, you're getting chances and you're creating things and. and you know, you want to come out on top. Chance out in front again, and that goes wide from Culligan. Cardiff were trying to build to something here. The Steelers will send this one in. It's off the shaft of the stick of Levi Nelson. He then throws himself at Mark Lewis. Levi Nelson is a, an irritating rash of a player. He will wind you up. He'll get right underneath your skin as Franson brings it back in again. He's on the angle. That's off the side of the net. I think Bounds got a piece of it on the way through. I don't think he anticipated that the shot was coming. No, it, um, there, was a, there was a late stick in, but he just managed to get it away in time and um, just got enough of it to send it into the netting. Ben Bounds had another good season. Voted as the best goalie in the Elite Ice Hockey League at the end of season awards. And he'll backstop Great Britain at the World Championships, which starts two weeks today in Belfast. We'll have coverage of that here on Five Live Sports Extra and, of course, across the BBC as well. Great Britain going for promotion as the shot comes in. Andrew Hoffman works it all the way across to Richardson. Spin and a turn from Haddad behind the net. Armstrong pokes it into the corner. Now Franson reverses, gives it back to Haddad, but he can't control. Then he comes out in front. What a chance, good save. Second chance again, Brian denied. Cardiff nearly capitalising on something there. Bordalo taken away from him again. Here's Haddad. Oh, Haddad from his knees. Two Steelers crash into one another. And Hotham spins it all the way along the blue line. Now he gets it back. Can he step into one? The shot comes off the glove. He's never going in. He's always kind of looking for a little bit more, really. And Cardiff have Sheffield hemmed in the zone right now. And eventually they cover the puck. It's Matthew Wah who fell over and landed on top of it. Under five minutes to go in this first period. Devils won, Steelers won. Again, pendulum's gone the other way now. It's gone back to Cardiff and they're doing a really good job. Coming low to them, putting the puck behind Sheffield's defenseman, playing behind the goal line, making them face south, and bringing the puck back north to the point, going to the other side, Tony, stretching the stretching Sheffield Another good save. in their own zone. Another good save on that shot from Joey Martin. He then gets knocked over by Walker, and Debian will break into the zone. He's got a man right in the net. He comes back to Debian again on his backhand side, didn't get enough of it. Good play defensively from Josh Batch. Got enough of the stick to make the backhand shot very, very difficult. Cardiff will come in at the other side, though. Ben Tavolio. Drop pass, and Cardiff still have possession again. Back it goes to the blue line. Now they can walk in, they've got so much space. It's tipped all the way through the crease. How Martin didn't score, I'll never know. That's the best, with the, with the exception of the goal, best chance of the game. Incredible chance. He was inside the crease. Again, just... He almost got too much of it. A miss hit would have taken it through as the Steelers break in at the other end with Ferrara. Drop pass is Phillips. Slap pass, he goes to Jared Hagos, and that deflects into the stands. We get the benefit of a replay here of this incident. More good play from Cardiff. Puck comes back to the point. I don't... I, I think... Uh, well, I don't even know what happened, but one of the, I think it was Nielsen just vacated the lane. The defenseman just kept walking, walking, walking and tried to hit Martin on the, on the back door. Palpitations on the bench and now the chance to go again. It's going to be Haddad. Haddad steps to the middle, shoots, scores! Cardiff lead by two goals to one. And on the bullet of a shot from Joey Haddad. And they lead again in the Elite League playoff 
final. Devils two, Steelers one, still in the first period. Makes a really nice move, fake shot, steps to the middle, and then a quick release, puts it. I think he likes that spot. Same goal stick side, same side he went yesterday. Joey head out, second half of the season has been unreal. He has been exceptional for the Devils after having a couple of years where offensively he didn't do massive amounts. Yes, I mean, this league now, you know, 15, 20 goals is a really good season. And um, Steelers come back, kick save from the Robert Dow shot. He's still, say, not great years, or I think he was still consistently putting the puck in the net. Um, you know, I don't, you ask anybody, uh, they probably didn't ever, don't ever score as consistently as they would like to, but... I think since the turn of the year, though, he has been on yeah, a different yeah, level. Yeah, I agree. To what he's done previously is... The Steelers now have another hill to climb. They've already scaled it once to level things back up again, and I think the big thing for them is they're not going to want to play behind in this game for too long because it, it just takes so much of your energy just trying to fight back. Yeah, they got the pushback quickly on the first goal. Let's see if they can do it in the second. Three minutes remaining in the first. We'll bring you reaction from the Sheffield Steelers camp at the end of that first period. From down on the benches with Owen. As Cardiff come away again, that's a, almost an interception for Armstrong. Bordelow tries to step to the inside and the shot goes well wide. Cardiff regain possession again, then gift it back to Sheffield. They will get it under possession and Colton Fresser comes into the inside himself and his shot takes a ricochet off Aslan's stick. And above the plexi, so we get another break. We'll go down to Owen right now. Owen, has that changed things with the fans? Well, it certainly uh, pleased the man saying to my right, Danny Kearney, who is, as I said earlier, absolutely feeling every moment of this one. The Cardiff forward not involved uh, this afternoon uh, due to uh, injury. He's really absorbed with every moment. It has sucked a bit of life out of the Sheffield fans. The, the block directly behind me is kind of split between every uh, supporter in the Elite League. We've got Dundee jerseys, we've got the orange of Sheffield, we've got the teal of Belfast as well. And it is, uh, the course, the Cardiff fans right now who've got the smiles on their faces with 2.23 to go in the the first Joey Martin into the body saved again and Martin side netting maybe caught the post and the, the Devils realized they could win it here that goes over the top again and Cardiff putting their foot down Sheffield though can't do much about this they're just hanging on they're like a prize fighter at the moment who've been caught with a big punch and they know if they can get to the end of the round they've got a chance to get to in the lungs. That's the uh, Tom made a referee who made, uh, used a phrase yesterday, we, we bend but we didn't break, and right now they're bending, it's important for them, they don't break, two minutes. They can get this one back before the period, great, if, if you know, if they can go in where they are, they'll be, I think they'll be happy with it. You know, last seven, eight minutes has been, definitely been Cardiff. Paul Thompson barking out his instructions on the bench. And it's just a few words repeated there, isn't yeah. it? That's all he's trying to do, get a message across. Here's Haddad, the man who has the game-leading goal for the moment. Aslan. Saric goes on the boards. Behind the back of the net, Cardiff have it again. Good play by Jace Coyle. Jace Coyle tries to turn away from trouble, and then there's immediately three Devils players on him, but Steelers will come away. And now Walker... We'll take it over the blue line. Walker into the offensive zone. The shot from Nielsen doesn't come. Good defensive play from Cardiff to take it away. And then a massive hit by Debbie N. Sheffield will try and break in with Walker. He's got space at the face-off dot. Walker, shot will come in again. There's a penalty coming. And it's a penalty on... Is he pointing at Guillaume Debbie N? I think I... An interference, interference. I don't think... Yeah, he is. Debian's got no idea. He skated off to the bench. Debian still sitting on the bench. The referee Toby Craig, the man who's called the penalty. Debian remains on the bench. And he's going to have to come across the ice. And this is almost a double penalty for the Sheffield Steelers because he's 
probably one of their best penalty killers yeah, as well. He, he, if, he's, if he's not starting the penalty kill, he's the next pair going, definitely. Yeah. So if we're going to start with this, there are other Phillips and, and Hagos, so I'm wondering who uh, who's going to come back where DBM would have been. The shot comes in again, that's held on to by Irvin's Mustakovs. didn't know a lot about it. 73 seconds of five on four advantage for the Cardiff Devils. Shot from Hotham causing to a deflection from Andrew Lord, I think, in front. Saved as Steelers clear all the way down the ice. They don't go for a change though. They know that they have a lot of work to do, but Cardiff also know a two goal advantage at the end of the first period would be would represent a terrific, terrific. Yeah, first 20. Yeah, they'd be happy. I'm, I'm sure anybody going in 2-1 at the end of the first is going to be happy. Um, you know, this this penalty's big, whichever way, whichever, whether you're orange or white, you know, if you can get the, get one on this power play, you're kind of, you know, one step nearer. Shefford obviously got to keep them in reach and, and they need to get out of this and then go back at them. Offensive zone interference call. It's, a, it's an interesting one. Not often seen. Fifty-four point six seconds is what the big score clock says in the center of this arena. As Andrew Hotham brings in again, Steelers pressure, 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 but Cardiff keep possession and now feed it out from Martin. Scores. Three one Cardiff. A second power play goal. Sheffield stung. And the Devils are dancing with delight. Are they heading towards a Grand Slam? Just... I mean, you get that pass there, there's probably not many guys you would um, put your money on more than Joey Martin in the slot. Nice high to low play back up to the slot, and I don't know if it was deflected or Mustakov's got a piece of it, but... Interesting call. Like we said, offensive zone interference call. Definitely, you know, that, that possibly could have a big say in which way this game goes right now. You always know a third goal in a game is going to play an absolutely key role in where... For Sheffield, sat there, they're sat there, you know, the next goal has to be us right now, has to be. Here is Levi Nelson behind the back of the net. Ripped all the way around. Sheffield's first ever playoff final was against the Cardiff Devils. It was back in 1994. Down at Wembley. The screen live on the BBC. And Sheffield were beaten fairly handsomely. It finished Cardiff 12, Sheffield 1. Don't expect that to happen here today. But right now... The Cardiff Devils are looking good, they're sitting pretty, they lead by three goals to one here. Yeah, I think Paul Thompson is making his thoughts known and, and I guarantee I know what he's talking about. Well that was the opener, or the equaliser should I say, for the Sheffield Steelers. John Armstrong doing the business at that end. We're going to try and bring you some reaction from down at ringside. Paul Thompson remains on the bench. Jonathan Phillips continues to have the discussion here. He's talking to Dean Smith. It was actually the other referee, Wayne 16, Toby Craig, who made the decision. I think I think Phillips will just be saying, you know, that if that's if that's your call and that's kind of the the guide and, and that's where you are, then. There needs to be consistency for the next two periods on those, and it, you know that's just the way it's got to be. Well, everyone's gathering in that Sheffield Steelers tunnel. Paul Thompson having uh, a bit of a conversation with some of the Panthers fans who stand above there. Got finger pointing and finger waving. Uh, not entirely sure what's going on over there. But Cardiff have been pretty electric in this game as they lead here by three goals to one.
Joey Haddad, though, has been exceptional for the Cardiff Devils. His wrist shot made it 2-1 as we recap things here. And then good play by Hotham, gets it deep. And the pass finds Joey Martin. And Joey Martin makes it 3-1. A minute or so away from the start of the second period. Devils 3, Steelers 1. How do the Devils approach this period? Do they sit back? Don't change. Don't stop playing. Don't, don't sit back. They won't change the system. They'll still be 2-1-2 two two off face-offs. Uh, nothing will change for them. Um, Sheffield's a little bit different. They need to tidy things up. Um, you know, like we said, there's still two thirds of this game to go, so they don't have to take chances just yet. But, you know, the longer it goes on, the more it falls into Cardiff's hands because they can just, if they can soak the pressure up and jump, you know, Sheffield are going to have to start opening up. Um, but it'd be in, first 10 minutes is going to be big. Well, the players are back on the ice, and although it reads 3 1, the scoreboard in favour of the Cardiff Devils, shots on goal pretty similar. 11 from the Devils, 10 from the Steelers. And then bounds, though, only beaten once. And he's somebody who, who mentally has got stronger and stronger and stronger over the last two yeah, or three years. There was, a, there was a big, when he, I mean, he signed for Cardiff pretty early in the summer and I think there was a big question mark for a lot of people as to Cardiff were coming off a ninth place finish I, I believe I might be wrong on that but they, they didn't have a great season um, Bounty signed for them early and, and a lot of people were kind of questioning his decision but again another guy who's probably very glad he did make that decision Fans of all 10 teams in the Elite League here in Nottingham and I suppose you look at your big players in the big games. Right now, Sheffield needs to get more out of the likes of Matthew Wah and Colton Fretter. Yeah, there's a saying, you need your best players to be your best players. And, and Todd kind of talked about that. He said, you know, he, he, he paid tribute to people like Piggott and Myers and, and Culligan and people who eat ice time up. And then it gives his best players the chance to, be, to go out and do that. Um, and that's what they need. First face-off of the period, won by the Sheffield Steelers. It's Five Live Sports Extra, BBC Sports website, the BBC Sport app as well. Here is Matthew Wah, kick save, rebound pops out again. And now Armstrong, kick save again. Ben Bounds, magnificent to start the period as Steelers come out hot and create a couple of great chances. And now they have it behind the back of the net, trying to make something happen. Here is Saric, Saric off the backboards. Armstrong puts it out in front in the air. It allows Cardiff time. Matthew Wah hangs on to possession again. Here is Colton Fresser spinning behind the net. Gets it back towards Jace Coyle. Uses the boards to pick out Armstrong. Steelers working the right side. Quick pass comes. Coyle will just hold on the blue line. Now he sweeps one towards goal. A low wrist shot. Saric then will collect on the rebound himself and then makes a little mistake and that allows the Devils in. Lord is the man after it. And Andrew Hotham then wins possession back. Too many men on the ice though for the Cardiff Devils and that's a real painful problem for them. They don't want to get into that situation. It's a silly penalty to give away. Yeah, always frustrating for, for coaching staff when that happens. And, um, you know, we saw one yesterday we saw it again today, big chance for Sheffield. Well, the Cardiff bench will look at one another. Do people push, apportion blame in this situation? I don't know if it's eagerness or if it's, you know, you, you know who your change is and you know there's a certain amount of leeway given as to, as to how soon you can go. But I, mean, I had a chance to count six a long time before the whistle went, so... <laughs> it's enough. So the Steelers have a window back into this game and they have it with Robert Dowd who shoots deflected out in front by Debian. And Levi Nelson has it back. Steelers skate five on four, trailing three one. And they really need the power play to click. Cardiff, remember, have already scored two power play goals. Their special teams have been absolutely excellent. Culligan takes it deep in the zone and Steelers will now bring it away. 
It's with Robert Dowd. He's scurrying and hassling into the zone. Marcus Nilsson takes it wide. He spreads his legs as the shot goes across the crease and it's going to rip round the other way. And Andrew Lord brings it in himself. He stops, spins on his backhand side, trying to get a shot. Comes to the middle again. Martin fans on his effort. And Sheffield will come away again. Cardiff creating chances shorthanded. But the Steelers come in with Guillaume Debienne. He takes it behind the net, a power move. Lewis steps across him, and now the Sheffield Steelers shoot again. A big, big ricochet on the O'Connor shot, and then he throws himself on the ice to hold him at the blue line. Really good from Ben O'Connor. O'Connor spins in again, he's got space. O'Connor into the body, rebound again. It's Matthew Wire back inside. Can't finish it off, Bound saves it. Now Fresser shoots like a gallery in there. Brought down by the stick of O'Connor, right side hash marks. Steelers fans wanting a shot, it's saved again by Bounce. They've had some quality looks on this really power good chances, play. Yeah. Down again, now it's back to the blue line. O'Connor, one timer too high, it's going to go all the way around. They're going to get there and hold in, they do. O'Connor finds Matthew Watt. He's got options there, there were too many men on the ice momentarily for the Steelers. They're looking to make something happen here. 15 seconds remaining on the power play. O'Connor, he went for the softer shot. Armstrong nearly got a touch. Bound turn, bounce turned away. Now a chance back door. A little touch from the Devils. Takes it away from the stick of Colton Fretter. It's breathless. Steelers again. Armstrong goes too high. So close. And the Devils bent, but they never broke. No, a lot of quality chances there for Sheffield, but good job by Cardiff. You know, getting in shooting lanes, Bounds made a couple of big saves and uh, they can breathe again, but um, big penalty for both teams just to feed off that momentum. Cardiff will be looking to push back on their shift. When you have a team that blocks so many shots, does it start to get into your head a little bit? It does, because you need to change your positioning and change, you know, try and find that lane so you can actually get pucks through to the net. Does that give the Steelers a little bit of momentum in this game, or do Cardiff absorb the pressure and now come out fighting themselves? They lead by three goals to one. A simulcast on Five Live Sports Extra and the BBC Sport website. You can watch it, you can listen to it. Big hit on the plate. Nothing called. Luke Ferrara was a man who went down. And then Hotham does a great job. Three Devils in there to win possession. And now Aslant will send it behind the back of the net. Ferrara goes after it. And Aslan will have it back. Devils just about entering into Steelers' territory. And now Jace Coyle has it to Marcus Nilsson. Quick into the zone. Marcus Nilsson tries to shoot, but that's good play defensively by Batch. Now a chance to get it to Saric blocker save. And it goes up into the meshing. Great Let's... chance, great save. Um, Sheffield are going to be really happy. They've come out, put their foot down, and, and definitely got the start that they needed and wanted and probably needed the start of the second period. Rod Saric playing in probably his final professional game. I say probably. <laughs> you never know. He's had some big moments. He's won the playoffs with the Sheffield Steelers. And the time he's spent with them over the years, he's grown up, got married, had a family. Here is Walker, puts it in, scores! Something from nothing, Bounds is beaten. A shot on goal, and the Steelers cut the deficit to one. Get, just get pucks to the net, you never know. And I wonder, if, I don't know if Bounds was, couldn't see it, or it took a deflection, or, but yeah. He was reading one way, it took a deflection, went the other. Big goal for Sheffield. We said the next goal would be crucial. Absolutely crucial. In the momentum of this game. The, the, the power play gave Sheffield that momentum to, to kind of keep coming, keep coming. 3-2 the scoreline. Devils take a timeout. Let's go down ringside. Owen Bradley. Big goal, huge goal, uh, no doubt about it for the Sheffield Steelers. Let's uh, dive into the uh, crowd here and try and talk to a couple of people. This gentleman's a Devils fan. Uh, so you're live on the BBC. How are you feeling right now? Um, pretty confident, to be honest with you. My forecast for one, that's gone out the window. But uh, this team, this team is good enough to win this today, so 
We're looking good. You've got faith, you've seen them win titles already. Absolutely, I've been going for 30 years, since game one. So tell me, how special has this season been for you? Untrue, absolutely unbelievable. This is, brought, this is like a trip down memory lane to Cardiff Devils fans. We've got the best owners in the league, we've got the best arena in the league, we've got the best fans in the league, we've got the best team in the league, and we live in the best city in the UK. Well, let you enjoy the game. Good man, thanks. <laughs> so you work for the Taurus Board. <laughs> Taurus Board of Wales? <laughs> They've not signed him up, maybe they need to get him on pretty quick. Interesting timeout decision. What do you make of that? Big game like think, this? Yeah, I mean, in, what, you know, it's one goal game right now. Is he going to come to regret that later in the game? But, you know, maybe just calm the, calm the boys down. Um, just, just reset, you know, probably saying, listen, we're fine here. We're in control. They come out hard. We knew they were going to. Let's go, let's go back at them. Steelers trying to make things happen with Levi Nelson. Cardiff on the back foot right now. The Sheffield Steelers trail by three goals to two. But Cardiff have to find a response a little bit. Even though they still lead, they don't want to find themselves getting caught on that back foot as Franson steps in, the big defenseman. Franson with the move, where's the puck? It went round the back of the net. Thought it was caught up in Ben Bounds' equipment for a second. He didn't know where it was. And the Steelers back in possession again with Robert Dowd, who cuts back. He's looking for a potential shot. Circles the wagons, now puts it in. It deflects off Valdix, goes wide. And Sheffield working hard down low. And finally, Cardiff can bring it away. They just dump in and they go for a change. They set that fourth line out there. A collision between Saric and Bordalo. Now Armstrong over the red line. Spins away from Bright. Armstrong again, booze for him after his collision early doors. Fretter walks in again. Fretter with the move, he scores! We're tied at three! Carlton Fretter goes forehand, backhand, and the Devils concede. Bang, bang, 3-3. Three, three. This, this, this is probably one of the, as a spectator, this is a game you want to watch. Six goals. Over half the game left. There's definitely more coming. The ball. Great the ball. first, great first five minutes by Sheffield and Cardiff. They've used their timeout. They need to just take a deep breath right now because they're, you know, they're on their heels. Momentum's with Sheffield. They need to get the puck. Get, just get back to doing the things they were doing. I mean, again, as yesterday, they're under the cosh a little bit. They just need to, you know, take a breath, compose themselves, go again. Fired up the Sheffield Steelers are right now and you wonder that little incident around the tunnel the incident of the disagreement they, they're a side who play well when they have their backs against it's, the wall it's one of those I don't you you know the, the incident with and it was you know I, I think it was a Nottingham fan when you're 3-1 down you're going to draw on anything you can just to kind of get that edge and get that momentum get that extra step and whatever, whatever they used they want you know, more Nilsson's in here he's passed though won't find Walker we'll head back downstairs shortly 3-3, three, three. Steelers from 3-1 down, back to 3-3. Three, three. It's a chance, back door, what a save! Irving's Mustikovs flashing the leather to deny Joey Haddad. Great job by getting that on the net. That was a hard cross ice pass, backhand on the net. And Mustikovs read it, got himself over there. Let's go down ringside, Owen Bradley. Yeah, I heard from the Devils fans a moment or two ago. Let's just walk up the stand and find a couple of Steelers fans who look, well, they look, still look pretty concerned, but you've got smiles no, on your faces. No, 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 you just don't want to jinx anything. It feels amazing the minute, but you don't want to jinx anything just yet. Anything. Where did that start to this period come from? I think they've just had a, they've had a right rocket, haven't they? They really, really have. I just really hope they keep it up. I think Tomo's given a good talking to them, to be honest, yeah. Just really well, want to keep worked. it up. Whatever has happened, it's worked. Yeah. So, well, yeah. we won't let you jinx it. Let's get back to the game. Yeah. A right rocket. At least she said right, not right. <laughs> <laughs> she might not be from Sheffield. Yeah. Maybe rather more Doncaster. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to live ice hockey across the BBC. Five live sports extra on the radio. Simulcasted on the BBC Sport website. What a good save this was up from Irving's Mustikovs. Spread eagle and making the glove save. Very different picture this to what just even six minutes ago. 
now. Jace Coyle goes back. Steelers try and clear away. Big hit. We saw this from Cardiff yesterday when they found themselves in a, a bit of a rut. What they ended up doing was they got physical, and that's exactly what they're doing now. Lewis hammers Levi Nelson. They're going to take a penalty here, and it's going to be an interference call on Mark Lewis. And uh, you've got to think... set the tone, but you can't go too far. No, Cardiff could be careful right now. They're, they're kind of on a, a tightrope where they're obviously they're, they're not happy with the first part of this period. They're on their heels. You know, they're trying to put their stamp back on this game and play physical and just, it's, you know, just got to got to ride that line a little bit. And uh, call doesn't doesn't go their way, but now they've got to find something to kill this two minutes. 12.40 remaining. Mark Lewis sits, and it's the fans in orange who are making the noise right now. The Steelers get possession from the face-off. Here's Ben O'Connor moving to the middle. O'Connor, oh, still O'Connor, still Ben O'Connor hits his own man with a shot. Uh, but Walker, a judge to have been in the crease by referee Dean Smith. Uh, he disagrees with the call, questions it. It's a slap on the bum from the referee for his trouble. Uh, this isn't like football where the referees have to come from uh, somewhere else. Dean Smith is somebody who's from South Wales and. Uh, there isn't the same kind of uh, viewpoint, is there? When it comes no, to I mean, I, I mean, it's a little bit different. Hockey's a minority sport, and we we do have a limited number of officials. But you know, Smithy's been around for a long time, and uh, he generally he sees it. He'll make the call. Twelve twenty is what's on the clock. John Armstrong waiting to take the face off against David Bryant. Oh, I hope that lady's OK in the crowd, hanging on to her head. She got caught by the book. Friends around her not being uh, too nice, they're all laughing. They're waiting for Andrew Hoffman to change his stick here. One of them just shattered. He goes and has a look and chooses his weapon. Steelers in that offensive zone. Cardiff, no, they've got 141. The penalty to kill now. It's with Walker, who scored that goal out of nothing. Cardiff can't quite get there. Armstrong was strong, and then Walker helps out. O'Connor gets it deep. Armstrong looking for the man. Walker then on the volley, took it out of the air and pushes it wide. Here is Fretter again, cutting to the middle. He runs into a bit of trouble, though. And Cardiff can come away with it with Brian, but Brian's tired, he's at the end of the shift, and he'll just send it down. O'Connor. With Colton Fretter on the left side, into the offensive zone, it's back with Levi Nelson. Nelson keeps walking, uses the boards to Matthew Watt. Back it goes to Fretter, hops his stick though, and that allows space and time, but not cleared out of the zone. Steelers put it on net, Armstrong will collect again. 48 seconds remaining on the power play. Not got that clear-cut opportunity as yet. Maybe now it will come as O'Connor has it on the blue line. Cardiff doing a good job with Andrew Lord. The shot will come, they score! Deflected by Levi Nelson! And the Steelers come from behind to lead by four goals to three! 36 seconds remaining on the penalty! Wow, with a shot! And the Steelers lead in the playoff final. Levi Nelson, it hits him and goes in, he'll claim it. Cardiff Devils three, Sheffield Steelers four. What a celebration from Levi Nelson, down on one knee, and pumping his fists in excitement. And the Sheffield Steelers have had some eight minutes and 45 seconds Really impressive. The character they've shown to come back into this game has been immense, actually, Tate. Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering if 
And obviously, they didn't make it to the finals last year, year before that, losing finalists. So I wonder how much they're drawing on. Another chance out in front this time for the Devils. Aslett drawing on that lost final a couple of years ago. They still have a lot of the same players. I think it's a... You get to this stage, there's no tomorrow. Like, you... You play, you, you might play 20 years and, and not get to a final of a competition. It's, uh, it's realizing the chance you have in front of you. What do you make of the goal? Just traffic. I don't know if it takes a, takes a deflection, but you get pushed to the net, hits the leg, hits the backside, somebody gets a tip. Sheffield on the front, front foot and Cardiff on the back foot now. And, and the, the interesting question now is how do Cardiff respond? They've burnt their time out. They've been in a position, and it's almost the other way around from their, their semi-final yesterday against Dundee, where they were the team that climbed the mountain yeah. and got back. I mean, it, it, when you get penalties, it always disrupts your rhythm, and they love to roll their four lines and just be relentless. And, and the penalties hurt that because... Your penalty killers are, are going to be on the ice, or you know, if you've got the power plays, vice versa. And they've struggled to get, whilst with those penalties, you know, they've struggled to get Joey Martin on the ice because of the, that. And you know, that that hurts you after a while. Sarich moves it behind the net. Not much space to work in there. Cardiff trying to put the pressure on here and get some offensive zone time. Walker just about battles it in. Now they break. They've got a two-on-one. Can they finish? Good deflected save that was. It came off the skate of Andrew Hotham. I feel like we've not met, mentioned Scott Hotham at all tonight. <laughs> Referee goes down. That's the cheer. Steelers with another chance. It's with O'Connor. Walks in. He's all alone. Oh, could have finished it off. But great defensive play. I think by Doucette to take it yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. He does a great job coming back to the back post. But uh, if he... He just threw him off or he gets a stick or he just does enough. Sheffield have up the ante in a big way right now. Back it goes to the blue line. O'Connor finds Ferrara, puts it in front. Jonathan Phillips again. Tries to finish off but doesn't get a piece of it. And Cardiff eventually get it into the offensive zone. Try and make something happen here. Joey Martin pushed to the ice by David Phillips. Held in by Scott Hotham. Chance out in front again. Scott Hotham may get another opportunity here. Battle on the boards. Bentavolio. Scott Hotham switches it nicely. Josh Batch lets it go. Kick save. Irvin Mustakov has had very little to do. Nine minutes to go in the second period. Sheffield Steelers lead by four goals to three. Something we could never have really anticipated just 11 minutes ago. Well, that's, that's the way the game is, swings and roundabouts, and Todd Kelman said it, you don't try not to get too high or too low and play the situation that's in front of you. And, um, you know, it's... A... Here's what side of the net still, Matthew Watt. Going to be held in at the blue line. Zach Fitzgerald gets it to John Armstrong, who feeds it up towards Fretter. Fretter gets it back to the blue line. Franson finds Fitzgerald again. Franson again. Steelers look like they're on a power play. His shot deflects up in the air. And Scott Hotham should clear away. It's a long shift for Hotham. Gives it away. Another shot comes in. Goes wide of the target. Steelers get a line change, partial at least, as it goes all the way through the crease. Held in by Robert Dowd. He puts this one in on net tip just wide. Zach Fitzgerald driving the net. Cardiff now find themselves just unable to get the puck out of the zone. They're, they're trying ever so hard here, but Steelers just keep so they're, they're, boxing they're puck in. pursuit, yeah, just, just jumping on second pucks, being relentless, not giving Cardiff a chance to, to clear the zone. Haddad, he goes wide still. Haddad moves it to the middle, they score! On the break! It's a good finish from Ulmer. And having been under so much pressure, Sheffield let them in. Yeah, they'll be disappointed with that, but credit to, credit to Haddad. Drove wide, drove the net. Puts it across the net front, and then again, you get pucks to the net, you have guys going, good things happen, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a timely goal for them. They'll be, you know, that'll give them a chance back on level terms. It'll, it'll set them down, and, you know, from a, on their bench, it'll be a, a, kind of a, a lot calmer place right now. We're going to head back down ringside. Owen Bradley 
Well, I think if you can ever call a goal against the run of play, that was it. All the momentum with the Sheffield Steelers up until that point, it's still their supporters. I'm right down below them, and they're making all the noise. And, and the atmosphere down here at ring level is absolutely brilliant. I've noticed Jeff Walker a couple of times at the Steelers forward. In one occasion, he took his glove off to wave his hand up at the Steelers supporters and say, come on, get in this one with us. We need you with this one. Sheffield got a couple of quick goals after that, but 4-4, it's a nil-nil game. It's game on. What a game of hockey we have. This is a showpiece final, and they're putting on a showpiece performance. Cardiff led 3-1, Sheffield led 4-3. Saric goes after the puck. Valdix moves it in on his backhand side. Fournier goes after it for the Cardiff Devils. He then falls over. He's clipped, I think, by the skates of Levi Nelson. As O'Connor wriggles to try and hold in the zone, but Cardiff will do enough to escape him. Good puck possession now for the Cardiff Devils as Lewis drives wide, hammers the goalie. And a penalty coming on the Sheffield Steelers, David Phillips. As he hooked his man now. Yeah, ball. Lewis gets driving wide, he's got good momentum, he gets a decent shot. I'm not sure that there's enough to... to to stop him getting the shot away, but calls been made. Advantage Cardiff. So the Steelers lose a defenseman. Cardiff get a power play, and with 6:55 to go in the period, all of a sudden they find themselves in a situation where they could end up feeling pretty good about themselves walking yeah, out of this. Yeah, I mean, you know. He's, a little bit like yesterday, a lot of a lot of the the second semi-final, Belfast had possession. They just couldn't break things down, and, and the first 15 minutes, 14 minutes, sorry, has gone that way for Sheffield, and kind of come right back and score. So, well, can they do that again? It just shows you. It would be immense character, wouldn't it, from the Cardiff yeah. Devils to have been in all kinds of trouble, then to get themselves this fifth goal. This has been a, one of the most brilliant finals I've seen in a very long time. Yeah. Bentavolio finds Hotham. Blocker save by Irving's Mustakovs. You may have just heard it slap off that blocker. Cardiff quelling things now. They're looking to build something here. The saucer pass from Andrew Lord doesn't find its destination. Hotham puts this one in. The high tip goes just wide. Lord on his backhand side. Does he score? He says he thinks he has. Mustakov says no. And the referee, Dean Smith, points towards the face-off circle. Well, Joey Martin just having a little hack and whack with Jared Hagos. Let's have another look at the replay of this one. Benzo Valio's trying to sell he's that trying, he's trying to, Yeah, he's just trying to convince the ref. It's good. Yeah, it's it's a good six inches away, but um, A for effort, definitely. 78 seconds on the penalty remain. Devil's bench will feel better. The, the heartbeat will just settle a little bit now. Yeah, and plus, the, you know, the... Their go-to guys have had chance to get out there and get some get some possession and get back into the game. Really, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's your top scorer, whoever. If, you, if you're not getting the ice time because of the situations, you you struggle to get back out there if you sit for too long. Steelers trying to clear the front of the net. He comes back out to Hotham. The shot goes through the crease and wide. And now Sheffield may get a chance to clear out the zone. They don't quite manage it though. And Cardiff come back in again. The, the misread play. Steelers try and battle it out there. Haddad again. Finds Hoffman to the middle of the ice. Well blocked that by the glove of Jonathan Phillips. He dives to try and get it out of the zone. It's desperate stuff from the Steelers, but Cardiff still have possession and they, they look predatory right now. Shot will come in. That's blocked out in front again. Yeah, and Sheffield. Good, good job blocking shots there. Forced it out. It's Ben O'Connor, I think. Cardiff will try and come in again. Sheffield have been on a full line change. It's with her dad, he wants to shoot, he does into the body. And now Ulmer grabs on, and he and Fitzgerald and Debbie Ann. All involved. Wherever you're taking in this game, however you're following it, on the BBC Sport app, the BBC Sport website, or on Five Live Sports Extra, Seth Bennett and Ashley Tate up here in the commentary box. We thank you for your company. We hope you're enjoying it. 
a nerve shredding afternoon at the NIC. Andrew Lord pointing out where he wants players to go. Back it goes towards the blue line. Martin gets it with his glove. Bentavolio. Read by Hagos. Swedish forward. Played in the SHL, played in the Altsvenskan. First season in the UK, and Hagos has done well. Still, Hagos lets it go. That's a, a brilliant block and a painful one from Hotham. He skated pretty hard after his man as Mavioua will send it back towards Hagos. Hagos tries to go around his man. He's been pretty tangled up there with Mark Richardson. Cardiff will try and come into the zone again. That's good play. Two, Two on one breaking for the Steelers. Fresher, he's got Armstrong with him, finds Armstrong, but Richardson with a great play. Tried to pass to him, didn't really find it. But Richardson did so well to bring it down. Sheffield recycle. They're in the offensive zone with Armstrong. Armstrong on his backhand side, shoots this one off the shoulder of Ben Bounds. Wah collects. He now steps to the inside, Matthew Wah into the body and it leaps out. A Ben Bounds, the whistle though goes very, very quickly. Both teams just trying to get as much puck to the net as possible. Um, trying to get traffic, pucks to the net, rebounds. Bounds positioning though, pretty good in his net. But Cardiff being electric at times, ready to try to come forward. Sheffield have tried to step on and meet them wherever they can. As Mark Lewis has possession back for the Cardiff Devils. 4-4, four, four, four minutes remaining in the second period. And Matthew Myers balls his way into the zone, he forgets the puck though. So that allows the Steelers time and space to clear and a flying figure of Robert Dowd gets it to the middle. Jace Coyle gets caught deep in the zone. And now Cardiff will try and come away with Doucette. Doucette off the ankle of Rod Saric. That will be a stinger. Cardiff didn't have too many men on the ice. They had a sl slightly sloppy change, though. As Levi Nelson works this one back. Cardiff, though, with Doucette. Finds Ulmer, who scored that game-tying goal at 4-4. Now here is Sarge. Soft pass, intercepted by Haddad. Now Levi Nelson, can he get it into the zone? Walker gets there first, turns away from his man. Back to Levi Nelson. Nelson goes up a bit of a blind alley there, doesn't get anything out of it. And now all of a sudden, Fitzgerald with a hard blast, looking for the tip more than anything else. Debbie N will walk to the middle. Debbie N still misses the net himself. Sheffield not able to find the target as that's tipped wide, this time from Walker. Sheffield with the pressure on. What can they do? Walker gets the chance. Oh, it comes back again. Walker scores! His second of the game! That was a, a broken play. It was a one-timer that didn't, didn't happen. Nielsen didn't get hold of it, and I think it comes right back to Walker. And obviously, Bounce, Bounce is reading the first shot. Yeah, it goes to stick, skate, right back to Walker. Bounce is out of position and... So close to making the save. Under she his pad. Sheffield Steelers retake the lead by five goals to four. What a wacky game of ice hockey we have here. Well, my prediction of not many goals is definitely not coming true. Some action down on the Sheffield Steelers bench. Guillaume Debienne, I think, is geared down. Um, running repairs, I think. Yeah, I don't know whether it's his fighting tie or something like that. He's, he's got some issues down there anyway. He's geared down to his equipment. 2.27, a huge stroke of luck that we can see now on our screens. A little bit more of Guillaume Debienne. Just trying to reattach that strap. Should he get involved in an altercation and uh, that jersey comes off, then he would get kicked out of the game. So that's why he's trying to make sure these things don't happen. It's such a huge stroke of luck that is for the Sheffield Steelers. A, a miss hit shot that hits a skate, yeah, they, finds the hold, open guy. You make your own luck, kind of. What a card Kind of luck. rings true sometimes. They're trying to come back in this game again. Steelers will ice the puck. We can go back down ringside, Owen Bradley. 
It swings one way and then the other. What an incredible final this is. Not often that the final is the best game of the weekend. Sometimes it can be a bit of a chess match, a bit of a clinic. It was a tight one last year, of course, uh, when the Nottingham Panthers came through. And not often, by the way, that the two teams play their best hockey of the weekend at the climax. Yes, they've not been at their best throughout, but this is the best Sheffield Steelers we've seen all weekend. And that spell that Cardiff had at the end of the first period was certainly the best of the, that we've seen of them at Final Four as well. Luke Ferrara deep inside his own zone. We'll just send this one down the ice. It will be another icing call. 2.06 remaining. Sheffield just happy to take the whistles right now, just to slow things down. Two minutes left. They're hoping to take the one goal into the, into the break. In between periods, we'll get reaction from the Cardiff bench. We'll also be hearing from uh, one of the Elite League referees, Tom Darnell, who uh, isn't here this weekend because he's, uh, he's got a bit of an illness. I've uh, got a bit of a problem, uh, a health problem that's uh, kept him off the ice. We'll find out more about that. Uh, and we'll also be checking in with a, a couple of the local guys who have been following Cardiff and following the Sheffield Steelers through the season and get their take on how they think the final is going to go from here. That's all still to come, but there's still potentially <laughs> all sorts could happen in the next... One minute and 40 seconds. Cardiff in possession. They have it deep inside their own zone. There's a hit by Ferrara. Hotham goes down to the ice and he's still lying down there. There's a huge hit that comes across and all of a sudden Bordalo is trying to wind his team up here. He's doing his job. He's trying to fire up the Cardiff Devils. Hotham is down on the ice. Uh, and it, it was something involving Luke Ferrara, I think. I'm not entirely it, it sure. Like just to finish, just finished his hit. I don't know if it was late or I don't know if they kind of went knee on knee or not too sure what happened. Well, Andrew Hotham is down. I think everything is quelled at the other end. The referees will have to sort this one out. The doctors all out there on the ice. The doctors of both teams out there on the ice as well as the trainer. I don't know whether we're going to get another chance to have a look at this. Try and get a little bit more information, but Andrew Hotham has had another wonderful season, and he's going to hope it's not going to end this way. Is it appears to be one of his knees. There's going to be no penalties called on the plate, I don't think. Scott Hotham is lurking at centre ice. And he's uh, having a few words with the Sheffield Steelers bench. Well, here, maybe we will see this. Ferrara goes to make the hits. Oh. Oh, just catches him with a foot. Hotham turns away and just catches his... I wouldn't say it's knee on knee, but it's there's definitely leg contact. That's going to be a bad one, because although we don't know the full extent of the damage, you're always concerned with those on ligaments, which can cause so many issues. Cardiff trying to finish the period on a high, though. A period that they started leading by three goals to one, and they find themselves trailing five goals to four. This is like the good old days as Lewis comes oh. in and then a bit of push and shove, and all of a sudden this one's ready to absolutely break out. Saric comes flying in at the back. Yeah, the Lions have made the right call. It's you know they're even at the even at the dots or hash whatever. It's icing, but it was they were almost locked together going into the board. So everybody hanging on in there. How are they going to call this one? Somewhere underneath that pile is Matthew Watt. He gets up, James Kavanagh, the linesman's lost his helmet. Tempers fraying. And of course they would. This is a cauldron. The atmosphere, this is how much it means to all of these players as well. Wa goes to sit on a bench. And will he be invited to sit on the bench on the opposite side of the ice, though, in the penalty Yeah, box? there's not. I mean... I'd be really surprised if anybody gets an advantage out of this. 
but it's it's tough. That one's. A, you know, I don't don't often defend the officials, but the lines are. It, they're even, but it's. It just happens that they're kind of locked up going into the corner. He makes the call. It just. Does Wag get the extra penalty there yeah. for coming in late? Well, the conversation two, goes on. Two each. Yeah. Looks like it's all going to even up. But... Oh, and Bradley, it was right in front of you. What's your take? Yeah, could almost have, uh, have reached out and uh, got involved ourselves down here at ice level. Um, I think it's going to be a very brave official who doesn't call that one uh, even, Stephen, and uh, put one of each in the box, which is, it looks like exactly what's happened. And Ash has called it spot on. They were tied up together as they came into the corner. I think the officials uh, got it dead right with the calls. Um, we'll see what the teams can do four on four for the last minute of this period. Wide open space. Yeah, this is just a lot more room. Martin and Aslan, the two devils out there. Forward thinking devils at least. And Aslan loses that off his stick. And Scott Hotham. And th this is where Andrew Hotham would absolutely be thriving. Yeah. Uh, but it's his brother Scott who's the man who's out there and he's in possession right now. Good poke check away from Joey Martin, but then Martin comes and steals it off David Phillips, two on one. Can he go? Oh, what a great play, Ben O'Connor. Intercepted. He you know, tried to be unselfish and make the play. Steelers come back the other way, just pushed all the way across the zone. 20 seconds remaining, trying to move to the middle. Could have been a penalty call there, it is a penalty yes. call. Levi Nelson, a tripping call. He's just going to stick in there on Hotham. And now a four on three power play. There you go, tick clear as day on the replay. Yeah, I think maybe that situation, 14 seconds left, obviously we said it before, it's easy when you sat up here, but just, you know, retain possession, bring the puck out, give it to your defenseman, just see the rest of the period out. If I said there was lots of space four on four now, there is masses of yeah. space. Four on three, and it's a huge it's, advantage. It's huge. It's one. I mean, you have to give something up. You're outnumbered, and this is where you need your you need your netminder to be imposing, making saves, be active, cut that backdoor pass away. Here's a dad. If they got time to get one off, they don't. The hooter goes. The buzzer sounds to end the period. What an amazing period. Couldn't, it's been. couldn't be better balanced for the last 20 minutes. Cardiff chasing that Grand Slam. Sheffield Steelers chasing that 10th playoff title, which will be record equally. And this time it's the Cardiff bench who are waiting to discuss things with the officials. But Irvin Smustakov's made a couple of decent saves to keep his side in this one. Yeah, he didn't have... He wasn't as busy as he was in the first, but the saves he had to make, he, uh, he did a pretty good job. We're going to head down ringside very, very shortly. The conversation is being had uh, with the Cardiff coaching staff and Toby Craig, the Sheffield Steelers, Ben O'Connor just putting his skate car guards on. As we can go downstairs and get some reaction right now from the Cardiff Devils bench with Owen Bradley. Uh, Jamie Elson, uh, just first in the conversation with the officials there, what was said? Uh, we were just crashing in the, uh, the hit there late on Andrew Hotham. Uh, it, was, it was pretty behind the play, so, uh, uh, you know, we've got the Elite League player of the year, they're getting injured late, so we're just questioning why there's no call there. This is a, a crazy final. Yeah, it's uh, certainly not the game, the sort of run and gun game that we really wanted to get into, but. Um, you know, you got to give them credit. They came out, they had some serious pushback there, and, uh, you know, we've got to be ready to go. It's just like yesterday all over again. Were you caught cold by, by how fast they came out and of that period? Uh, you know, we shouldn't be. You know, there's no excuses, really. Uh, we've, we've faced them enough times this year. We know what they're about. You know, they're a quality hockey team. Uh, it's two good teams going at it, but, uh, yeah, there was just, you know, there's too many breakdowns in the D zone there. We've got to tidy some stuff up. And we had this conversation yesterday when you were behind against Dundee in the, in the semi-final. This is where everything you've been through this season, you have to draw on it. 
Yeah, yeah, that's it. Now there's you know there's one potentially one period left, so uh, yeah, there's no tomorrow. So uh, it's drawing on those times, it's drawing on yesterday. We've been here before. There won't be any panic, but uh, yeah, we've got to tidy up some stuff because uh, you know we can't afford any more goals against it. Thanks for your time, coach. Right, thanks. So the Sheffield Steelers make their way back out onto the ice. Are they 20 minutes away from lifting a tenth playoff crown in their history, or? Is it going to be on the other side of the ice? Is it going to be about the Grand Slam Cardiff Devils? They've got to come from a goal down. They're going to start with a massive four-on-three power play. Game breaker, I think. Um, I, I don't want to look past the next kind of 59 seconds. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see who they start and... Um, Just to see how kind of what what how Sheffield kill this as well, like how you know they've got to keep it keep it tight. Like I said, you you you're outnumbered, so you have to give something up. It's whether you you give that one thing up and you you, you kind of give that one timer up that you know and most you know most Mustakovs knows that that's where the shot's coming from, so he's square to it. Or do you stay passive? Do you do you kind of press where you can? Be interest really interesting. People watching this on the BBC Sport website all around the world. Andrew Hotham is out there on the ice. Remember, he went off the ice with what looked like a nasty knee injury. But whatever they've done, they've patched him up to get him out there. And he could have a key role to play in this final period. 59 seconds of four on three, and then there'll be a passage of 47 seconds of power play time. Five on four for the Cardiff Devils. The league title is the biggest, but it feels best if you end the year as the playoff champions. Right now, there could be 20 minutes remaining in the season. Cardiff will be hoping that they can take it potentially into overtime. They'd love to finish it in regulation time, I suppose. But here we go. Strap yourself in, folks. However you're following, whether it's on Five Live Sports Extra or the BBC Sport website or app, I hope you can enjoy and endure this final 20 minutes as Joey Martin steps in. He's gone off the crossbar. Goodness me. He had an open shot there. I think it was the crossbar. Yeah, he had, he had room to step down and take a shot and rattled one off the crossbar. We didn't get the ping up here, but I'm pretty sure it did. Steelers intercept with Jared Hagos. He does a good job on Joey Martin. Then Aslan will look to move it to the middle. Ben O'Connor makes the play. Cardiff have it back, though, with Hoffman. Hoffman with a little move. He's trying to feed it back door. They score! Andrew Hoffman! A celebration to antagonise the Sheffield bench, but he ties the game. Another third power play goal in this game. Yeah, I think it deflects I off a skate. A deflection off Philip skate. Yeah, there you go. Five hole. Yeah, you see straight Mustakovs. He knows straight away it's snuck through. He's unhappy with it. And Look at this celebration. Gonna, yeah. He didn't like Jeff Walker's celebration. That's looking at the Sheffield Steelers bench. He rubbed his hand on the ice. Yeah, and he rubbed Sheffield's noses right in it. Game's heating up again, isn't it? In the regular season, you can be pretty sure that Sheffield would respond to that. But this is the playoffs. This is a different story. And we've got a tight hockey game. And in five seconds, Levi Nelson and Mark Lewis will step out onto the ice. Oh, sorry, Matthew Watt and Mark Lewis will step out onto the ice. Perfect start for the Cardiff Devils. Here's Gleason Fournier. Fournier still, that's a hot one to handle for Irvin's Mustakovs. A wild one in Nottingham. Here's Armstrong. Didn't miss by much as he shot from just inside the blue line. Huge hit coming on the back of Carlton Fretter. No call on the plate. Lewis will bring it forward. In fact, it's Lord who brings it forward. Sent in. 
Freta moves it to Franson. Stolen off Franson, then he tripped his man. Should have been a call. Not given. Freta needs some help. Gets it from Zach Fitzgerald. Back to Freta. That was a high-risk pass. Cardiff have just got Sheffield running around right now. They're a bit yeah. panicked. Jace Coyle works it on the right side. Steelers into the offensive zone. It's with Levi Nelson. Snaps a shot into the badge. The big devil's badge at the centre of Ben Bounds' chest. And he hangs on to that one again. A horrible moment for David Phillips. I yeah. feel he'll have felt that. Just, it's one of those, you're trying to play the pass. There's nothing you can do. It hits the skate. And uh, obviously the worst possible outcome as a defenseman, but... Obviously, for a devil, that's exactly what you want. 17.57 on the clock. Ten goals shared between these two teams. It swung one way, then the other. Who is going to have the final knockout punch in this one? Cardiff in possession in their own zone. Nearly stolen by Robert Dowd, but now a chance to skate away down the ice. Bentavolio knocked to the ice. He's going to get physical again, it feels like. Valdix couldn't control on his skate. Lord takes it back. Stretch pass to Debian, just stays on side. Rides the hit of his man. Does well, Debian on his backhand side. Couldn't find his way through, though. Andrew Hotham did enough to stand him up. Hooked behind the Sheffield Steelers net. Now worked out to the blue line. Right? Push back round towards Joey Haddad. Using that big body, Joey Haddad. On the boards, Ben O'Connor then steps across to make contact. Haddad will retake possession. Cardiff have it. Marcus Nilsson is battling, but just not strong enough to make an impact. Aslan. Still, Aslan again tries to make the pass. There's a chance now. The shot on a half-empty net. Batch couldn't get it through. Here's Haddad again, shoots this one, takes a deflection off the side of the net. Aslan goes so close. Ben O'Connor tried to, he, he made the block and he almost put it on Aslan's, well, he did put it on Aslan's tape, but just no angle to put it away. Owen Bradley, let's go downstairs. The devil so, so close to that uh, go-ahead goal off the outside of the post. Mustakov scrambling as well. They look like, as the Steelers did at the start of the second period, is the devils who have come out hardest. Uh, and you certainly feel that Andrew Lord will think they need to, just to negate anything that Sheffield might have come out with. They've got that goal, we're level at five all, and right now, as Matthew Myers hammers his stick down on the ice and says, let's get on with this, referee, it's the devils with all the urgency. It's the Devils with all the momentum as well. Face-off win for the Cardiff Devils, and Doucette has it. Fed back towards the blue line again. Now Culligan, his shot is blocked. I think Mustakov's reacted to the puck as it came in towards him, and Sheffield clear to neutralise. Here's Fournier. Jonathan Phillips stands his man up, comes in and makes contact. Offside given against the Cardiff Devils. Lots of long stares, lots of conversations, words exchanged. Under 16 minutes remaining in regulation time. Big hits coming in right, left and centre. In this game, both teams upping the ante again. They're becoming more and more physical. And Sheffield, I suppose, needs some possession in it. Yeah, I mean, the first couple of minutes was, was Cardiff. That's what they do really well. They cycle the puck, they get it behind the defenseman, they change size, they go high to low. They bring a forward high, making it, you know, stretching the zone a little bit and making it really difficult for the, for the defensive team. So they kind of got back to where they like to be, really. Here's Andrew Hotham. He has the game-tying goal for the moment. Cardiff will come in again. Big shot, that's a blocker save to push it away. Bentavolio gets a touch. 
And then it pops out in front of the referee. This is a game of weird bounces and odd things. But Armstrong will stretch to get it in the zone. He moves on to his backhand side. Still Armstrong tries to reverse it. Here's Matthew Wah, tries to step through. But he ends up spinning around in circles. And Armstrong again finds Fresser. Fresser, what can he do? Steps inside his mouth. Oh, what a play. It was last ditch. Last gasp. Scott Hotham used every inch of his body and his stick to make that play. Look spectacular. He's making ice angels, I think, in the end. And then he absolutely smashes into Rod Sarich and pins him to the ice. Big, strong boy. Those two had the little altercation earlier in the corner. It feels like the, uh, the intensity is just picking up as the minutes tick by. And desperation as well. And you notice it with the fans. The sound in the building is just yeah. ease back as everybody edges towards the... The one thing is, is a, watching and playing, or if you're you know, coaching and fans as well, if you're playing, you've got, you get an element of what happens in the outcome. Coaching staff, you, you've given your direction and you, you know, you've kind of sent your, sent your instructions out, but it, it's up to the guys to, to, to carry it out. And uh, it's a nervous thing when you don't have a great deal of control of the situation. Back to the top they go, the Cardiff Devils back in possession again. They're looking for a sixth goal. A sixth goal that potentially would bring them a fourth trophy. And it would end a long, long wait for a playoff title as well. Here's Robert Dowd. Steps away from his man. Dowd being exceptional down the stretch for the Sheffield Steelers. Sheffield Steelers bench wanted a penalty. I don't think that was ever going to come, though. As Dowd will now move this one clear, and here is Debbie and The puck, though, just wouldn't catch him up. So he has to hang on. And here, Fournier just chop, 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 chop on that puck. Eventually, it's iced by the Cardiff Devils. He's trying to take the temperature down ringside, Owen Bradley. Yeah, the temperature down here, just as hot as it is up there. The uh, little uh, battle down on the ice a few moments ago between uh, Saric and Holman was uh, quite respectful, actually, as the two players tussled in front of the uh, Steelers bench and that puck got stuck underneath the pair of them. I just wonder if the two sets of coaching staff told everyone to calm things down after we saw the fireworks at the end of the, uh, the second period in particular. But 13.45 uh, to go, five all, next goal, also crucial. The draw pulled out of the zone. Franson finds Debbie in. Walker, who has two goals. Couldn't hang on to it, though, and it's back with Andrew Hotham. And Andrew Hotham moves it away. Zach Fitzgerald has it back. Fitzgerald on his backhand side does just enough to muscle it away. A little high risk. <laughs> Cardiff build again. Floated into the zone this time by Hotham. He wants to give the big forwards the chance to get in there. And the big man, Bordelow, tried to coil. Got out of the way of the hit, though, pretty swiftly. And somehow managed to maintain possession. Ferrara after it. Bordelow just chips it away. Former Colorado Avalanche man. Big, big man as well. Goes in to make another hit, Bordelow. Uh, and the role players now have got to be really careful that they don't get too excited when they do get the chance to get out there on the ice. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's, again, we talked about it. So you're treading a fine line right now. And um, I think that's caught icing. It could have been offside as well. Yeah, it's just it's treading that line and it's controlled aggression. It's kind of directing it in the right way. It's going to have to be pretty big. I think for the referees to make a call now is going to have to be you know, taking away a goal-scoring opportunity, that kind of thing. Or giving a goal-scoring opportunity, yeah. of course. Armstrong in the face-off circle, 5-5, 12.26 to go. Simulcast on 5 Live Sports Extra and on the BBC Sport website as Matthew Wire has the puck taken off his tape. Cardiff thought they were off to the races there for a second with Bentavoglio. But maybe they will go now. Andrew Hoffman. Always oh, seems to have so much energy. He's got great hands and massive wingspan. 
tries to put this one out in front, and what a chance that was. It goes wide. Who's Fournier? Just got Sheffield just got caught kind of puck watching a little bit there and they didn't see what was coming. Colson Fretter tries a give and go with the boards it's to himself. Fournier comes all the way back. And Fournier gonna move this away. Just wondering whether Cardiff have cut down on the defenseman here. Another huge hit coming on the boards. This time it was uh, Fournier that went in on Anders Franson who loses his stick. And right now he's kind of pinned out there, not able to do anything. Collects his stick now. And Andreas Valdix will bring it down. Robert Dowd tries to bring it down, and he does just enough to force it over the line. Cardiff are coming strong here. And Sheffield have got to figure out whether they can take a forward step and come and meet them somewhere in the middle, or whether they try and absorb and get them on the counter-attack. Shot from the side, hits the side netting again. Poke check coming. And a good poke check from the Steelers netminder, then slash, 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 Aslan once, twice, three times. Regular season, that probably gets caught. Doesn't. Zach Fischiel goes all the way down the ice and dumps it in deep. Steelers have it with Debian. Jace Coyle is the man back on the blue line. The shot, though, goes straight up in the air. Steelers have it with Saric. Tries to pass it back and turns the puck over. Here's Doucette on the outside of Jace Coyle. Coyle does just enough. Myers on his backhand side, Doucette goes close, really close. But Sheffield survive. Now Walker straight up the middle. Gets help from Debian, but Cardiff do enough. They block the lane, they block the middle. And now Ulmer brings it back the other way. It's kicked off his tape, but like a pinball, it manages to find Bryant. Under 10 minutes to go. Tied at 5-5 in the Elite League playoff final. An explosion of goals in this one as Hoffman puts it towards the net. It goes through the skates of Bordelo. And Mustakov hangs on. Um, I couldn't see, yeah, that made its way straight through, but you know, good traffic from Cardiff, kind of back to doing what they do best. Sheffield digging in, playing D with desperation, and um, you know, they've, they've got that step today when they do get possession through the neutral zone. They're, they're trying to continue and, and um, trying to get pucks to the net and, and create some offensive chances. Well, Cardiff were the best team through the regular season. And it feels a little bit like they're the stronger team here, but Phillips is coming back for the Sheffield Steelers. What can the captain do? Brian tries to take him out of the play, eventually Cardiff do win possession back. Going to try and fight this one out of their own zone. Sheffield will go back with Ben O'Connor. No icing will be called and O'Connor will go for a skate. O'Connor has the ability to do pretty much what he wants out there. O'Connor, his shot deflects and a face-off will go in the zone. As it came off a Cardiff player last. Let's go back down ringside and hear from our man Owen Bradley. Uh, I'm joined by uh, Brad Moran, the Nottingham Panthers captain, uh, who just got a minute or two with us. Um, what, are, what are you made of this game? It's been an incredible final, Brad. No, it's uh, it's intense. It's back and forth. And uh, kind of glad you don't want to be in ones like this where it's going back and forth and everything seems to be going in. It's pretty tense. Have we seen just what momentum can do for a team? Cardiff had it end of the first. Sheffield came out and, and took it start of the second. Yeah, exactly. They uh, they jumped on them, but you know Sheffield never quit, and we saw that in uh, our playoff games with them. And now it's back and forth. So uh, here is Colton Fraser moving wide, puts it in on goal, second chance. Where's the puck? It's in the crease, and it's going to be held on to. Big incident down there. We thank Brad Moran for his time. Part of that winning Nottingham Panthers team. But was that? I'm going to say that's a given the. There was a similar call, similar play in the... I think it was the first period. Could have been, I can't remember, but, yeah, very On similar. And, yeah, and I think that um, that was probably a more obvious call not given. And uh, as we said, it's... How good a goal-scoring chance did the referees view that as being? In regular season, that's a call all day long. 8.55 remaining. Keeps his feet moving. Colton Fraser as he goes in and gets his chance on goal. It's all about mentality, though. Fortitude required. 
And some players just know it's their time. They, they enjoy, they thrive in this situation. Of all the players you played with, who, who's the one that, that kind of had the most in these situations? Um, a little bit different, but someone we both know, but he was a goalie, um, Jody Lehman, who, you know what, he was, I mean, he would be the first one to say, whenever he was in this league, he probably was not the best, each year, he, he wasn't the best guy in the league, but when it came to big games, he knew how, he knew how to win, he knew how to get it done, and uh, I think he had back-to-back -back shutouts in the playoff finals when he was with the Sheffield, and that's, that's pretty impressive. Almost unheard of. Yeah. Sheffield will try and break through the middle again. We'll go this way in that one. But Marcus Nilsson's move was read pretty comfortably. And it allows Cardiff to move again. Sheffield will try and come in with Debian. Moves to the outside. Shrugs off Myers. His shot from the angle, it hits the side netting. Debian battling to win back possession. Finds the blue line. The shot is a high one. It's broken up. Three on three break. The Cardiff Devils. They're trying to move down the ice with Doucette. Drop pass shot. Good save. Cardiff, though, still pressing here as that goes off the glass. Can they set something going with Fournier, the I think, defenseman? I think if you're Nielsen, you, less is more there. I think, you know, uh, we just talked to me, everything seems to be going in, and, and the, the thinking has been just get pucks to the net for both teams. I think there you've got speed coming through, coming over the blue line, the defenseman's backing up, use him as a screen, get the puck to the net. Cardiff then coming back the other way. These two teams trading, trading, trading. Here is Richardson stepping to the middle. Aslan collects top of the circle. That's deflected over the top. Brian puts it in front. Cardiff try and pinch in to keep it in. They do keep it in, but Sheffield eventually clear away. And then Debian battles it into the offensive zone. Tiny little touch was enough. Ben O'Connor then. Makes enough space to find a pass to Jonathan Phillips. Phillips with a stop-start move on Lewis. Had him going this way and that. And then he overhandles the puck and has to go back. But the ice isn't great at this stage. It's a warm building. Phillips again helps it on its way to Hagos. Hits the linesman as he puts it in. Phillips has it back. Tries to go one-handed. Richardson, though, matches him step for step. Luke Ferrara. Sheffield in possession, Hagos with plenty at the net, comes off Phillips, can he finish? Just wide! A golden opportunity and the Steelers' captain couldn't find the net. Now Cardiff will try and do the same thing at the other end. They go round the net, Bentavoglio puts it across, Steelers hack it clear. The game like chewing them stretched to its absolute limit. I think he could have taken a step to the net there. He had time. Martin, three on... Four, they come in, <laughs> three on two for a second, three on four the other way as a, a line change that lets Sheffield wide open. We could go to overtime in this one. That would be six minutes away. Five, five, it's tied here. As Sheffield concede another icing call. If it is tied after 60 minutes, we're gonna get a 15 minute break. Then, 10 minute overtime period followed by four on four 10 minute four on four overtime period if there's no winner that would be sudden death it then goes to five minutes three on three should they still be tied it then goes to a shootout game winning shots it's a good job we've got an instruction manual we do whether or not i can read it properly is another thing as aslin puts this one in it's held on to by Irvin's mustakovs again I'm going to correct myself on, on that as the shot comes in. Again, takes a huge deflection, goes just wide. As it moves forward, Fretter. Now here is Wah. Wah tries to move to the outside. And Cardiff will bring it back the other way. Aslan. Oh, they've got space on the outside. Saric, though, with a terrific block. Still Cardiff, though, threatening this one. Bobbles up in the air. Where's the puck? It's in the crease. There's a massive old scrap on there, and Wow will come away with it. 
Oh, it's so scruffy. I think Sheffield would have felt a little aggrieved if that had, uh, that had gone in. Here's Fretter going the other way. Colton Fretter! Oh, what a save! He's out of Put this world! From Ben Bounds, he saves it with his toe off the ice. That is outstanding! End to end. It's outrageous! Oh, my word, I can't believe what I just saw. Cardiff now have a chance at the other end. What a game of ice hockey this has been. Hotham puts it in. It's high off the glass. There's a man sitting in the crease. It's Matthew Myers. The referees allow play to continue as Robert Dowd with possession. He shoots this one. It's off the skates. Hotham takes it off Dowd's tape. Doesn't get it deep. And it allows Cardiff to send it in and icing will be called. So the correction is this. Ben Bounds asked the fans to get going. Tied after 60 minutes, 15 minutes intermission, followed by 20 minutes sudden death overtime, five on five. Here is the save. Look at that. He gets it up, but just not high enough. Yeah. On the ice or ride up. We get a chance to see the replay. Ash, I want you to describe this the best you can. We'll catch it next break in play. Should something else more interesting not have already <laughs> happened. In this game, you wouldn't put any money on it. Here we go. Down the ice they go. It's going to be another icing call. We might take the temperature of the fans in a few moments with Owen. Ash, try your best to describe that save. It's, it will. Frederick, he gets, he's going after it, gets the luck, but he has net there and bounces down and out, and he just gets a leg up, and anywhere else it's in the net, but great save from Ben Bounds. Pretty sure everybody on the Sheffield bench but hands were probably in the air at that point. It certainly was a, a half, wasn't it? <laughs> For some of those players. And Carlton Fresher is a guy who has the ability to do that kind of thing. 4.14 to go. You're listening to the Elite League Playoff Finals on the BBC. Tense and nervous in this building. 5-5, five, five. Cardiff Devils 5, Sheffield Steelers 5. Face-off play, Steelers try and move it to the middle. Here's Fitzgerald dumping into the corner. Bounds will collect it as it goes round the back of the net. Then Debbie N reaches in, that long reach. Big stick just getting a touch of the puck. Coyle can't quite hold it in, Sheffield will go back. It's taking a deflection, so there'll be no icing call. Fitzgerald finds Walker. Now here's Marcus Nilsson, who's not really been able to get any speed in this game. We've not seen him skate at all, which is one of his features. He's a really quick player. Cardiff have shut him down well as the deflected pass goes into the zone. Then Wah stretches. Aslan then tries to break into the zone. Ulmer has it taken off his tape. There is Armstrong battling down the boards. He's taken out by Aslan. And now into the zone comes Ulmer. Oh, he's got space. Ulmer to the middle, shoots. Saved by Mustikov. We're going to get a whistle. Big chance. It opened up for him. Yeah, the, the puck kind of turned over in the neutral zone. Sheffield's demon were reading the rush, and then it, it popped back, so the, there was a big gap for Ulmer. Might want that one back. 3-14. Remaining a five-all hockey game. One goal in this period, the equaliser on the power play for the Cardiff Devils. And Sheffield with Robert Dowd will break three. They go two on two. He tries to go past Fournier. He goes this way, that way. Valdix is having his stick almost uh, taken out of his hands as he tried to scamper in and, and get a piece of that. As Nelson and Valdix do a decent job, it breaks towards Dowd. Cardiff will clear away. And now here is Haddad. He's isolated, spins to the middle. What a move that was. Debbie N. Steelers with O'Connor, comes in, goes short side. The shot misses the net, could break again. Here's another chance, O'Connor puts it out in front. Steelers can't get it out of their skates, it was Valdix. The pass wasn't tape to tape, but Valdix had space. Under two and a half to go. Is there a winner, Ashley Tate? You Is think so? The, the, the way, the, I mean, for a 5-5 game in the final, it's so, it's so open. There's chance after chance. We may as well be in overtime right now, though. Oh, 
Great save again as it comes to the middle. Oh my goodness, there's chances going in absolutely everywhere. You, you look back for one second, oh. as now that's a long rebound, it comes out in front and it's collected again, Devils nearly capitalising. We're into the final two minutes, Steelers then come back, what have they got? Here is Walker, puts it in on goal, it's nervy saves at either end. Armstrong tries to spin off his man, he's taken down but still controls possession with his feet. Armstrong spinning and spinning but Cardiff come away with it this time. Bentavoglio. Oh, that's a nice pass. This could be the chance to win it, but there's Saric to get a skate on it with 90 seconds to go. He pins Andrew Lord. Matthew Watt, stick broken in two. And now here's Fretter. Sheffield have a three on two here. Fretter picks out Coyle. Strange decision. Coyle then tries to make the pass. Oh, Connor <laughs> nearly gives it away. And then he'll take it into the offensive zone, right side. 60 seconds to go with Matthew Wah. He lets one go, he goes short side. It comes all the way around. David Phillips holds in. Put towards the net again. O'Connor will collect. Sheffield in the offensive zone. Is there one last chance in this game? And if there is, which way is it going to go? The players must be shattered. End of a long season. Matthew Wah. Uh, Banks one off the boards. There will be no icing call. 36 seconds to go. Here is Brian. You've got to trust those players out there on the ice right now. If you're the coach, you've got to pick the guys you know that aren't going to make the mistakes. Here's Debbie M. He's the man that got the Steelers to the final, but he can't do anything with this. Nilsson. Marcus Nilsson for the Steelers with speed. He goes around the outside. Nine seconds to go. Chance for Walker. Couldn't get good wood on it. And folks, we're going to go to overtime. I'm out, of, I'm out of breath just watching. This is uh, a privilege to sit here and watch this and, and commentate on it. It's a fantastic quality product right now. Well, we're going to get 15 minutes. <laughs> we're going to get 15 minutes to relax and uh, uh, to consider everything that has happened. We're going to get downstairs to Owen Bradley. He's going to let us know what the feeling is amongst the players down there. Talk to me about when you're in this position as a player. How, how do you mentally, what do you do mentally? I think you're so, you're so focused and, and entwined on the, on the game. I mean, you, you've come this far, it's one shot. I think right now it's more, we talked about it, it's, it's a, you just mentioned it there about who's not going to make a mistake. It's you want guys to make strong, safe plays, but also guys who've got the conviction. When the chances come, you need guys to, you know, have the courage to, to, to make the play. I know Owen Bradley is uh, down on the Cardiff Devils bench. He wasn't too far away yet. From Jamie Elsom, I know he just had a few words with you. Uh, what's the what's the mood like amongst the Devils? Uh, the message from both benches essentially is uh, we've got to get back to our locker rooms and plan for this. Uh, Ash will know. I don't know if you can ever really plan for overtime as a player, as a coach. I'm sure it's something that you make plans for, hoping that you'll never have to use them. But the focus down here on, on both benches as I made my way through is absolutely astounding. And, and let me tell you, two sets of players who are absolutely exhausted as well as the Steelers players made their way down the corridor. They were all handed cups of water uh, by the, the back office staff as, as they made their way off. Every single one of them looks like they've given everything and they have through 60 minutes of hockey. Uh, I guess it's uh, the question of who can stay the longest to, to find who's going to be the, the Elite League playoff champion this year. Well, the players will go in there. When you go in that locker room, what happens, Ashley? Uh, you'll sit down and, and take a big deep breath and... Um, you know, you put your gloves on the dryer, take off. Most guys usually take off the top half and just try and cool down because Owen said the same thing. And, you know, they'll be losing a hell of a lot of fluid. You know, it's a full building. Nottingham's a warm arena anyway. It's warm outside. Um, but it's, you know, you just have to find it. It's a one once you get one opportunity right now. And uh, again, I'm. I'll, the, the thinking for me for both teams, a lot of it's just get pucks to the net, get traffic, get pucks. There's rebounds there. There's been, you know, there's been empty nets. 
guys on the crease and, and we saw Bounds' leg kick save or the last gasp stick to, you know, just stop somebody getting close to it. It's, um, if this is the first game of hockey you've watched, you've chosen very well. It has been absolutely phenomenal uh, watching and seeing the, the way that these two sides have traded with one another. Do, do the coaches try and give you much information at this point? What do they Probably do? not, because you, you've gone through all that previous, you've had your, your pre-game meeting or you've done video and, and the thing with overtime is, it, it, like I said, it's kind of, it, it's not making the mistake, but also it's, it's not clamming up and not freezing up. I mean, that shouldn't happen now. You know, we're three periods in and, and uh, it's been some game so far and it's, you know, who, who wants to finish it? Well, that's the goal that tied this game at 5-5. Andrew Hoffman's deflected pass, really. They, they went off the skate and went through Irvin's Mustakovs, but there were plenty of chances within the game. And there was lots of physicality as well. And both teams could have really found some, themselves in a situation where, you know, they, they could have wrapped this up. There were, there were chances there. Patrick Asselin hitting, hitting the outside of the post. It's been both. There was Martin hit the crossbar. Phillips had a great chance on the crease, and, and, and uh, I think Law just got his stick in the way. Fretta had that great chance. So, it's. Can you explain why this is a 5 5 game? Well, like, just kind of for a period there, everything seemed to be going in one way or the other. And, and uh, I think the last final I saw like this was, was a Nottingham Cardiff final, I think, uh, in the 10 11 season. And I think that ended up 5-4, 6-4, something like that was the final result. But I mean that was that was one of those games where it was it was back and forth and you know pucks would just, just seem to find the net and that's been the way it has been today. So the Cardiff Devils played in 07 in the Elite League era against the Nottingham Panthers. They played Again, against the Giants in 2010. They played against the Panthers in 2011. They played against the Panthers again in 2012. And the one thing all of those finals, all four of them have in common, is that Cardiff were beaten. And you've got to keep going back to 1999 when Cardiff were able to claim the end of season trophy, when they were able to find victory against the Nottingham Panthers. That was back in Manchester, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. But I think, I mean, the, the playing stuff they have now, the management, I don't think there'll be any association. I think the poor guy we spoke to earlier who's been a fan for 30 years, I'm sure it's in the back of his mind. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I, think, I think you're absolutely right. So, we're, we're just waiting for the ice to freeze. It's not quite when hell freezes over, but right now this building's so warm, it, it feels... Pretty similar, you would imagine. Five Live Sports Extra, the BBC Sport website. This is a simulcast. We're bringing you radio commentary. We're bringing you video on the BBC Sport website as well. We really hope that you're enjoying it. The Cardiff Devils, five. Sheffield Steelers, five. And what we're, what we're going to remember here is what's at stake. A grand slam for the Cardiff Devils. For the Sheffield Steelers, though, it's a different kind of piece of history. Yeah. They will go level with Edinburgh. The Murrayfield Edinburgh franchise with a record of 10 playoff victories, which is just remarkable in their relatively short history, only formed in 1991. Here come the Cardiff Devils. It's with Joey Martin. Saved. He didn't know anything about it. Mustakovs. Martin again. He started on fire. Sheffield will try and clear away. It's looped up and away. Three lines, four lines. Two lines, what do they do? I don't know, like, to Tomo's rolled his three, uh, sorry, his four pretty much throughout, and they've given a really good account of themselves. It'd be, you know, it'd be hard on them to not see the ice now, but he's going to get his, his game breakers out on the ice as much as he can. Aslan turns and moves with speed into the offensive zone. Now Ulmer to Aslan again. Looking for a pass. They send three in deep beyond the goal line. Sheffield will send the puck out. Will it reach the edge of the zone? It will reach the edge, but not go out of the zone. Yeah. 
Sheffield with Dowd, pushes it forward, it's given away though, Ulmer keeps it wide, now puts it in on goal and claimed by that great big catching glove of the goaltender Irvins Mustakovs at the other end, then mounds are just as the equipment, but what about the goalies right now? It's got to be in their head that one goal is the difference, no oh, mistakes. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because, you know, their job, player makes a mistake, he's got four guys to help him out before he gets the goalie, goalie makes a mistake, it's in the back of the net. It's season over. Next goal wins here in Nottingham. It's as simple as that. 60 minutes of enthralling hockey. And how the players have got any energy left, I don't know. Cardiff send it forward again. Hotham to Doucette. Offside, though. Myers. Big ball of a man. Just found himself in an offside position going in ahead of that puck. Who looks more composed to you right now? Well, Cardiff's had all the pressure that first minute or so. Interest. Sheffield's gone to line four. Cardiff's gone back to their first line, so I think we know we know what they're thinking. And Tomo thinks his depth is gonna, is gonna see them through. So big shift. A little coaching battle. Luke Ferrara and Andrew Hotham goes go into the corner. Sheffield have it with Hagos. Hagos trying to nip away from his man. He's kicking, he's scrapping for that puck. He's done pretty well, but that's a good defensive play by Andrew Lord, the player coach. It was Scott Hotham. Two Hotham brothers playing together now. Just wonder whether Cardiff, have we seen much of Lewis? Uh, in the second half of this game. Here is Saric again, he floats one into A the little zone. bit, yeah. Um, I think as the game, we've seen more and more of Scott Hotham. Haddad. You keep your eye on that. I wonder whether they've now got down to rotating five. That could be the case. Here come the Steelers into the zone. It's with Matthew Wah, tries to cut to the middle. Wah takes it out of the air. He nearly baseball swings it in. Danger not cleared for Cardiff, though. It's with David Phillips. Just to put one off the backboards, it gets in the skates of the referee, and they're trying to work it out of there. The last thing the referee wants is to see the puck turn over off them. Here's O'Connor to Fretta. O'Connor keeps driving hard towards the net. He goes in, O'Connor gets the rebound across the crease. Steelers with two great chances in tight. So far, Ben Bounds making the saves. Good defensive play. Lewis is out there. It was Matthew Myers who made the good defensive play. He's out there with Hotham now. Haddad. Cardiff barrel in with Lewis. Everybody's offside. I'm not sure what he's complaining about. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. the puck just ended up behind him. Let's have another look on the replays at this chance. Matthew Wah, puck pops up, and hand-eye coordination. Bounds have to be sharp. A little change from the Sheffield Steelers. No Levi Nelson uh, going out with his unit. Guillaume Debienne taking the left winger's spot. I wonder whether this is a defensive responsibility thing for the Steelers. Dowd will step into the corner. He gets absolutely bounced by Fournier. And Fournier will move away again. Debbie M playing almost. As a, a third defenseman for a moment. As Valdix will step in, he shoots it. Short side pops up in the air. Let's go back down ringside, Owen. I'm standing right beside the Steelers bench and you really do get a sense down here of just how exhausted all these players are. I've seen Ben O'Connor, you know, taking on an energy gel and I think he's got some jelly babies that he's chewing as well and obviously taking on as much water as possible. There's been hardly any conversation on the bench between the Steelers players. It's get off, get a swig of water, get your breath back and then get back out there. No one talking to each other. All the direction comes from the coaching staff. The players absolutely focused on what they have to do when they get out on the ice. 
We're in overtime here in the Elite League playoff final. Hotham works it all the way across. It's tipped into the zone again, chasing after it goes Jace Coyle. Steelers in possession. Coyle tries to find Rod Sarich. How are those old legs of Rod Sarich is going to be feeling right now? You feel here, it tomorrow. Here's Debian drives towards the net. Debian tries to stop, start, move. He was played brilliantly by Mark Richardson. Cardiff come away with it, though. Walker, who has two goals on the day, has to step back as Andrew Lord spins on his backhand side. Gets it round to Fournier. The defenseman puts it out in front again. Lord hacking and chopping. Coyle goes and battles for the puck. Uses his glove. Turns it straight back into the Cardiff player. Aslan has it. Just to flick it to the inside with his foot and then the Steelers clear the zone. And they're going to go chasing here. Ferrara, plenty of energy. Steelers going to get a turnover in the zone. What can they do with it? Here's Jonathan Phillips, cuts towards the middle. The Cardiff-born forward, though. Couldn't find a teammate. Sheffield will go back. No icing. They go on a line change. Ben O'Connor has to stop and check. And he just pauses with possession. Here's Matthew Wire through the legs. He finds Fresser, top of the circle. Fresser, oh, what a chance that was! Great save! Ben Bounds stacked the pass to deny John Armstrong. And now Cardiff can come back the other way. It was a bang-bang play, best but Bounce has to be there. Chance of, best chance of overtime so far. Fretter again. It was a cross-scene pass that opened things up. Now Fretter tries to go on his own. Scott Hotham for company. Big and strong, and he plays the puck away, and Cardiff have it back again. Now it's the speed of Martin this way, that way. He's forced to the outside, just holds the puck in the zone. Ventavolio. But it's Bordalo, isn't it? Who's out there for his first shift of overtime. Fournier. It deflects again. Lord will collect. Lord goes cross ice. Matthew Wire will just try and smash it out of the zone, but doesn't manage it. it. Means Cardiff have possession again. They've got options either way. Quick passing. Fournier again. Two men driving the net. Andrew Lord was taking everything with him. The puck no breaks to an orange shirt and Sheffield skate clear. It's with Zach Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald tries to go wide on Fournier. I don't think he's gone end to end for several years in his career. And probably not, at least a couple more before that. And Sheffield get caught in a hand pass. Oh, it hasn't slowed down, has it? It hasn't slowed down. Great chance for Armstrong on the doorstep, but he was so close. Yeah. You've just got to hope that goes through the goalie if you're the attacking Yeah, player. he did everything right, went to the net hard. Got the puck on the net, made, makes bounds, make a save, and... We're heading back down to Owen, next break in play. So close in shots on goal, as here comes Coyle. Coyle fires this one, Bounds doesn't know where it is. His teammates help him out, though, by clearing away and get it out of the zone. Walker finds Debian. Debian again, still Debian. Oh, outstanding bit of forward play by Guillaume Debian. He's a very good player, but the Steelers will break in. What a chance this is. The Steelers to win it. Where's the puck? It's on the line. No goal, they say. How did Ben Bounds keep that out? How did that not go in? see it again. <laughs> that was great, great pass. Just gets a leg to it. And great defense. Nielsen tries play. to make, makes a nice move. He just doesn't quite... Get enough of it at the back end. Great job by the defenseman coming around the back as well. I think they're going to go and have a look at this downstairs. Uh, with the goal line technology, just to be sure, I'm pretty certain um, that this most likely didn't cross the line yet. A shake of the head, no goal. But they have the use of goal line technology. And so, good that they check. Dean Smith making his signals, the referee. 5-5, 12-25 in uh, what the scoreboard says is period number four. <laughs> but let me tell you, there's only ever three periods in hockey until you get to overtime. And we're in overtime, and it's sudden death. And it's a cracker between the Sheffield Steelers and the Cardiff Devils. Steelers, back-to-back -back league champions. Cardiff stole their title. 
by beating Sheffield in their own building. They beat the Sheffield Steelers in the Challenge Cup final. They'd love to make it a hat-trick of victories over Sheffield to win silverware here today. It also would seal them a Grand Slam. The first ever four-trophy Grand Slam as well. Here is Joey Martin with the shot blocked down in front, swept away by Saric. Players falling over. Andrew Lord, the player coach. So diligent, gets it back towards the blue line. Hotham will step to the middle and everybody scrambles around a little bit. Steelers have got a bit of a mixed line out there at the moment. First unit out there for the Cardiff Devils. Andrew Lord again trying to use his strength. That's a pick play by Bentavoglio. Of course, that won't be called at this stage. Now they try and make the pass out to the top, but Lord couldn't connect the dots. And it goes all the way back into the defensive zone, Ash. Just trying to catch my breath. <laughs> there is Fournier. Finds Ulmer. Ulmer just fires one high. Sheffield should outlet their zone here, and they will. With David Phillips. Shovels it into the zone. He's the one that's going to go chasing. The defenseman, first man in. And Sheffield couldn't quite get it out in front. Cardiff with the takeaway again, and Asselin in control. Cardiff have been very good at maintaining pressure in Sheffield's zone because they put pucks in areas where they know they can get them back. And the guys who aren't in possession, they know where it's going, so they can start moving to that area, which, which helps them sustain pressure in the offensive zone. And give them one, two, and three chances yeah. all at once. Yeah. There's Ben O'Connor, going to get a hit there from Matthew Myers. And Steelers clear it all the way down the ice for an icing call. We'll go downstairs, Owen Bradley. It must feel like an away game at times for, for the Sheffield Steelers rather than a neutral venue. Down here beside their bench, I can feel exactly uh, what it's like being surrounded by the Nottingham Panthers fans who, it's pretty obvious, are supporting the Cardiff Devils this afternoon. They can look over to that far side, Sheffield, and see the orange wall of their supporters. But down here, it feels very much as though it's an away game for them. One of their players just made their way down the tunnel. I think uh, Matthew uh, Waugh down, uh, is down here is just having a bit of running repairs on his skates as well. One of the uh, off-eye staff is just, I think, uh, sorting out the blade on his uh, skate. It's uh, all that sort of stuff. Running repairs, get back on the ice as quick as you can. Everybody's got to be out there in overtime. Tape it up, strap it up, whatever. The intensity level hasn't dropped, not one bit. Sudden death overtime here at the NIC in Nottingham at the conclusion of the British ice hockey season domestically. World Championships to come for the Team GB boys. Away come the Cardiff Devils. Gleason Fournier double clutches as he tries to send that one into the zone. Cut out by Sheffield, but Fournier has it back and now the space. Bentavoglio with a shot deflects though. Well blocked by Zach Fitzgerald. 9.31 is what the clock reads right now in period number four. It's gone quick, it's, it's, gone, it's carried on end to end. Some really good chances. No one's blinked yet. There hasn't been that mistake, that individual mistake, that no, mental it's, breakdown. It's almost like you, you take it back, you pare it right down to, to such simple, purely to the basics. Might need a moment of brilliance to win this game. And there are some pretty fine players out there. One of them, Joey Martin, takes the face off but doesn't win it. Sheffield will, though, move forward. Here's Colton Fresser. Fresser moves it to Armstrong, offside. Matthew Wah doesn't agree with that. He sweeps the puck in anger, one-handed, flips it down the ice. Devils five, Steelers five. Frustration at, at, at the call or? At the fact they did go offside. But the whistle blows quickly, and after all that frenetic action, we're going to get a couple of face offs in quick succession. They're enjoying it. The row of beer bottles. From supermarket home brand to the Australian brew, the Amber Nectar, I think. They're all dressed up as cans and bottles anyway. They're right behind the Sheffield Steelers bench. 
Saric loops one into the zone. Richardson brings it down. It's all the way down the ice. Cardiff going to negate the icing here. Bentavoglio will get in there. He comes away with possession. Steelers need to close him down, but Cardiff going to try and exploit this one. Shoveled out in front. Saric will intercept. He can clear his zone, and he will clear all the way down for another icing call. And rely on John Armstrong to win the center. 8.50 to go. Well, it's got to that time of the night. Agadou's on. And people are dancing. Each to their own, I guess. I feel like I'm at some long-lost uncle's birthday party. Uh, that's probably just the way I'm dressed. <laughs> Cardiff driving hard to the net. They'll want to celebrate something right here. It's with Aslan. The shot goes away. Scott Hotham snaps one. And through a forest of bodies, Moose, as the crowd chants, Irvin's Mustakovs makes the save. <laughs> Cardiff get another offensive zone face off. The fans aren't cheering lots right now. They're, they're almost beside themselves. No. <laughs> Just using the first half of the seat, sat on their hands probably. Hoffman, no sitting in the commentary box, standing in the room only. Asselin seems to have had more of the puck in overtime than he did the rest of the time. Steelers trying to work the puck in the zone. Jonathan Phillips getting a shift on this. Third unit for the Steelers. Valdix will go chasing. The Steelers maybe now have cut down to three lines. I think that's been forced more than a, a choice. David Phillips in possession. Goes backwards to Ben O'Connor. Off the boards it goes. Now's Debbie in, but taken away by Fournier. Cardiff couldn't quite connect on the lead pass. Sheffield will try and bank away. Fournier gets in there. Debian going to come clear again. Still Guillaume Debian trying to get his body in there, but Fournier ain't such a good skater. Then Fitzgerald steps in, absolutely flies into a hit. Sheffield trying to move this one. Can they find a shooting lane? Puts it all the way across the face of goal. It was Walker. Then Fitzgerald, but Matthew Myers nearly loses out to Walker again. Sheffield will come back in again with energy. Drop pass, easily cut out. Walker then blocks the drop pass, the next pass. And Cardiff will come away themselves. Here is Joey Martin. Martin right up the middle, shoots, glove save. Great save. Huge save by Irvin's Mustakovs. He got so close there, he got to the hash marks. Martin, now Hotham on the outside, is whistled offside. And we get another break, under seven minutes to go. Let's go back down to Owen Bradley. Well, I can't seem to hear from Owen. He's lost somewhere underneath the building. Face-off goes into neutral ice. And it's a scrappy one, eventually won by John Armstrong, just getting the better of Joey Martin. Here's Saric, shot goes in too high for a shot on goal. Hammers off the glass. Armstrong tries to win it. Oh, three on two breaking for the Cardiff Devils. This could be real danger. Could this be the opportunity they need to get that one killer shot? Hotham spins away. Back it goes to Martin. Martin snapshot kicked away by Matthew Watt. Playing the secondary goaltending role. Then Fretter just helps it round the boards. Saric trying to get there first. Ulmer there. Loses his helmet. It means Sheffield should clear. Sheffield do clear. Cardiff got loads of players on the ice. I'm not sure in overtime in the playoffs they're going to call one as Matthew Myers steps into the middle. Saric strong. Levi Nelson back out on the ice. He's missed a few shifts as now it comes towards the middle again. And a glove save. Another shot. Another save for Irvin's Mustakovs. He made that look relatively comfortable, didn't he? Nonchalance as he plucks it out of the air. So five to go in the first period of overtime. Is there a winner here? And a 
The Cardiff Devils will need to find a new sentiment to take the face off. Deep in Sheffield Steelers territory. Rod Sarich furiously cleaning his visor on the Sheffield Steelers bench. They're all sitting down, Cardiff all standing up. Are you somebody that, that liked to sit down? That was great uh, skill by uh, Jonathan Phillips. Takes it on his skates into the zone. We'll come back to that in a moment. There's a chance side of the net. Doesn't go in. Steelers pressing hard here, but the Devils going to come away. A one-on-one one on four situation. But Cardiff still in possession with Haddad, who goes backwards into his own zone. Ulmer gets himself in a tangle. Steelers caught offside. Yeah, I prefer to sit, but then one person stands and then everyone has to stand because you can't see what's going on. But Can we check back in with Owen Bradley, I wonder? I just wonder whether the bodies, the broken bodies down here are starting to have an effect. I'm watching Ben O'Connor have a little skate. The Steelers defense were just trying to shake his legs out, get some of that lactic acid out of his muscles, no doubt. Uh, the other man you mentioned earlier in overtime, Levi Nelson, who we've not seen a great deal of. I've just seen him having a couple of conversations with the uh, Steelers medic. And from what I can see, he's not been back out since, but we'll keep an eye on him. Ben O'Connor getting some attention to his foot by the looks of things. Sheffield Steelers' helmet goes flying, that's uh, Jared Hagos. And the one person more nervous than this right now will be the GB coach, Pete Russell. Plenty yeah, of I GB mean, prospects out there. Yeah, I mean, he's got his... He's still got to come down by five. Um, I think, obviously, he hopes to make that decision himself as opposed to being forced to because of injuries. A bit of confusion here. Sheffield were thinking about making some line changes. Uh, and I think basically Jared Hagos has to go off the ice. Uh, and, and that seems to be the problem here. He's got an equipment problem with his helmet. Um, uh, that's what he's trying to explain to the referees. Um, he's been told, get back out there and take this face off. Uh, and he's not allowed to take the face-off because he's kicked out the face-off circle. I don't know, it seems to be an unnecessary delay. 5.30 to go, 5-5 five, five the scoreline, 10 goals shared. It's live on 5 Live Sports Extra and the BBC Sport website and the BBC Sport app. You can watch the pictures. That's icing against the Cardiff Devils. So Sheffield will consider changing their lines again. And it almost feels a little bit like everybody's just getting a bit edgy. Yeah. Right. Not nasty, not getting upset, as this could be a chance out in front, turn towards goal, nearly picked out the stick of Marcus Nilsson. Sheffield surge with Walker. Hotham goes behind the net. Culligan steps into one. Culligan with a shift, I think, on defence here, as it comes all the way back to the top. Shot from Franson goes wide. Yeah, I think Cardiff are running five and then they put Hulligan back on D to give them six. I think Josh Batch might be the one who's not seeing much ice right now. Here's Debbie N, walks in, takes a deflection off a skate, comes again to the Steelers. They're going on a line change, the puck's all there. None of them know. They don't wisely touch it, though. Here's Debbie N, right the way up the middle. He doesn't have too many options here, so he just throws one in on net, will get a face off, and that will suit him down to the ground. Yeah, an offensive zone face-off, Sheffield will take it. We've heard it already this evening, they've been... I think they probably have the percentage on face-off wins. Um, these things become, as the game goes on, become more and more important. The fine lines, do they look at a set play here? Steelers I think the thing is, it's not just on the sentiment, it's, tough, you know, it's, on, the, it's on the wingers to get in and help, see here? There you go. Wow, shoots yeah. from a tight angle, we'll get another face-off in the offensive zone. That was a play where Fresser was going to jump in and try and... Yeah, snap. I mean, Armstrong just ties his sentiment up. The wingers know what's happening, they're jumping on the loose puck straight away. 4.26 remaining in overtime, first period. It is continuous, it will remain five on five. The players will be allowed to decide it on the ice. The fans get into it as well, they're trying to spur their team on. Here's Jace Coyle 
Uh, shoots the pockets, shattered the stick, though, of Bentavoglio. And that's given the Steelers a massive advantage in many respects because Bentavoglio could have been off to the races. He spins in a circle, Scott Hotham touch play, gets it back from Joey Martin, now Andrew Lord. Lord drops it off to Fournier, there's a gap up the middle, Fournier steps in again, here's Joey Martin to Fournier, what a save! <laughs> chance at one end, chance at the other. Another, again, great save, nice little play. Fournier leads the rush, makes the pass, goes to the net. I think he gets the final touch as well, yeah. That's why he did well to close the five hole between the legs, that yeah, vulnerable I mean, obviously area. It was a bit like Armstrong's chance where the closer you, the later the play happens, the, the tighter the angle, so. Cardiff, shoot this one in, it's blocked out in front. O'Connor with a double block again, and then Phillips and Valdix, and now Jonathan Phillips finds Robert Dowd. Dowd moves this one off the boards. Can he create something here? Tries to just play it out in front. Valdix has it, Valdix shoots! Went wide, I don't think Bounds knew much about it. David Phillips makes another interception. Cardiff, though, will have this one back. Haddad lugs it in again, that big body. Gets it towards Ulmer. Ulmer makes the move down low. Steelers reject it again. And now Jonathan Phillips, all that energy. Goes on the outside of his man, Fournier. Fournier will go back. Keeps the puck moving. Sheffield with a line change. Really good energy from these players. They've now played for 77 minutes in this game. And if you try and put that into context, that is pretty much sprinting. And you're talking probably what number of shifts that you would have in a game and talking number of minutes that you maybe have played. Some of these guys now will be, will be up there 35, 36 minutes, potentially even above that. Bentavoglio, should say Bordolo, was out there racking bodies on that shift. Sheffield with Armstrong, wants to skate on his own. He's got space to work in as well, Armstrong. Didn't have anybody driving the net for him. Soft shot, didn't get to where he wanted it to be as Walker puts one in. Now the turnover and Cardiff going to come with speed. They've got three on three, Lord with the shot high and over the top. Martin then collects. It's pushed again, Andrew Lord, stick check comes out in front. Is it going to fall to a Cardiff stick? It does. Hotham, quick play to Culligan. Culligan on the blue line, kick save again. Steelers send it away. Oh, Steelers get it out of the zone. And now it could be a chance for Matthew Wah. Wah with a stop-start move. He can't get past Culligan, but he will get some help with Marcus Nilsson. Nilsson on his backhand play. Fred's a good save. Super save by Ben Bounds. And Sheffield back in neutral ice. 1.40 to go. Nilsson goes in again, Fresser behind the net won't get there first. David Phillips will, he just sends it behind the net. Debian lurking, but Cardiff in possession. And that gets the Steelers fans going. O'Connor takes the man, he thought about just going for the puck. And he made a good play. Played out in front again, stick check Debian. Asselin, his eyes lit up. He felt for a moment that that was going to be his moment. That was going to be his chance. Sheffield clear to neutralise. Can they nick possession as well? Two on one into the zone. It's tight. Defence coming back now. Everybody's tied up. <laughs> the, the amount of holding going on. The chance oh. comes out in front. Fretter lobs up in the air and he has to be patient. So patient. And they're pushing and shoving out in front again. Debbie ends in there. Valdix is in there. It's a standoff. Nobody wants to throw one. Nobody wants to do anything. But listen to that. This has been an incredible game of ice hockey. And in 46 and a half seconds, we'll be treated to more. If we get that far. Well, where's this face-off going? It's going to neutral ice, isn't it? We're going to head down between the benches in between periods. 
I'm not sure whether anybody will have enough breath to speak to Owen Bradley, but anybody he could speak to, we would love to hear from. There's a player without a helmet on the Cardiff Devils bench right now. Is that the figure of Mark Lewis? I think it might be. Is that is sent all the way down the ice. Cardiff will try and come away with it. Sheffield have men back, but breaking in, here's Myers. Myers Good stick. couldn't get past his man. It was just enough. Brian out there with Doucette and Myers. Myers' big body goes to the front of the net. Here is Scott Hotham. Hotham stands up. That deflects just wide. Cardiff go very, very close. And now Zach Fitzgerald will try and send away. Oh, doesn't clear his own. Brian working exceptionally hard. Ten seconds remaining. In the first period of overtime. Steelers put it into the zone, but they're going to run out of time here. Fitzgerald will just go after it, and that will see the end. He goes tumbling into everybody. Ends up with a hug and a, a conversation with the referee. Andrew Hotham and Fitzgerald still having a chat down there. And we're going to get potentially another 20 minutes. They're going to resurface the ice and we're going to go again. <laughs> Whatever you were planning on doing, um, all I can say is so, yeah, stay with us. So the league renting the facility by the hour or...? They're going to hope not. Yeah. They absolutely have to hope not. Who's your man for the Cardiff Devils? You said you think Colson Fraser could be the man for the Sheffield Steelers. Who's the man for the Devils? Uh, I think her dad's a good call. The big body of Joey. Yeah, he's got a great shot. He just they can get him the puck in the right areas. Andrew Lord playing in the middle. He does take a lot of face-offs. I don't know if that's just a Steelers will push it in to the offensive zone. We're back underway in the Second period of overtime. Effectively, this is period number five in the Elite League playoff final. Ten goals shared through 60 minutes of this game as Joey Martin steps in the middle. And you almost feel in these overtime periods, the first 90 seconds, something could happen. And then the teams kind of settle into their rhythm again. Yeah, that's it. It's just that, um, that initial, can you catch someone off to a slow start? Devils with the puck deep in the zone. It's with Andrew Lord, but he couldn't quite hang on to it. He will battle with Saric, and again, a big collision between those two. And Matthew Wire will clear to center ice where Fournier takes possession. Mark Lewis is back out there. There was a question mark over him. I know we talked about it in between periods. As Matthew Wire will backhand one off the glass. Gets it up towards Valdix. Goes between his legs, though, and Lewis intercepts and then sends this one down. Stiller's defensemen have been out there over a minute already since the start of the period, and they've got to be really careful they don't get hemmed in. It's the second period, so they do face a long change, and they are going to get left out there as well because they ice the puck. They send it all the way down the ice. It's difficult when you have a long change. It's the, the messages are to the defensemen is always change one at a time. One goes, fresh legs come out, and then those guys will try and swap to get the, the more tired defenseman closer to the bench so he can get off the ice. Scott Hotham shoots this one. It's blocked out in front. But where's it going to break? It falls towards Aslan. He doesn't do enough to be able to create a shot on goal, and the Steelers will now try and break away. They have it with Valdix. Valdix goes around Culligan. was too strong there. Stops and checks, then pokes it behind the net. Cardiff will take over, though. A sweep to find her dad. He's on his hash marks in his own zone. Debian will swing all the way around, puts this one behind the back of the net. I thought it had gone in for a second. I thought Robert Dowd had oh, golfed someone again, yeah. in <laughs> from the middle of the uh, air, and then there's a chance at the other end. It really is heart-in-your-mouth stuff here. Andrew Hotham into the offensive zone, top of the circle, has his shot blocked. Steelers have it again, they've got a man on the stretch, can they find him? No, Cardiff shut the door. Too late, he didn't see him quick enough. It was Walker. Bordelow is out there, Myers shoots on the angle, and uh, he's going wide of the target, but 
Don't lose most of just throws that glove out there, says thank you. Like that. Not for the first time today. Owen Bradley's ringside, you've switched from being behind the Steelers' bench to being by the Devils' bench. What can you see? I'm right by the Cardiff bench. Uh, just to give you a sense of how broken and battered these bodies are, the two Cardiff physios are constantly being called onto the bench to help out with this ailment or another. Uh, ben Tavolio right now is uh, uh, notably having uh, his uh, left leg stretched and seen to. I'm also told that the Steelers Three Steelers players had to have injections during the break to try and get them through this game. That's in addition to the five that had to have injections just to get them on the ice for the start of this final. That's how much it means. That's how much effort is going into this. Well, let's hope none of them are scared of needles. Sheffield go back. Franson gets it up. And now Debian will move into the zone and they've got space down the middle. Can Phillips get there? Good defensive play though by Fournier going back. Sheffield still have it. Zach Fitzgerald goes to the net. Sheffield will put this one in on goal. Fournier will come away with it. Smart play by Hagos though. He didn't chase him around the net. He just made his move. Sheffield with Phillips will send this one in. Hagos will go chasing. He and Fournier go into the boards together. Help coming from Luke Ferrara. The whistle will blow, and they'll hang on to it. On the boards. Another three minutes and 19 seconds tick off the clock. Good look for a second there, like Robert Dowd had put that one in. Yeah, much similar to Matthew Wall's chance. Came kind of baseball bat out of midair. The time of your life. There might be some dirty dancing if they do win the trophy tonight. That is Jonathan Phillips' favourite film. You do realise that. He will be inspired then. I thought Greece was his favourite film. Sheffield Steelers captain making his... ..appearance for the Sheffield Steelers, which takes him to the very top of the pile. Past Jason Hewitt, past Ron Shudra, who's sitting in the stands watching. The former Sheffield Steelers captain, he was the man who lifted their first playoff crown back in 1995. Now, Steelers go up the middle. It's with John Armstrong. That's a heavy slap shot. He's going to go and get his own work. Matthew Wire finds space out in front, but Armstrong still has possession. Turns the corner, puts it towards goal, but Cardiff couldn't get it through. They, they just squeeze in. They have four players in front of the goal. There's no space. There's no gap. Here's Armstrong again, just about battles it over the line, but he was offside. So we get another break in play, another change of lines. The scoreboard reads in pretty garish numbers. Shots on goal. Cardiff have had 36. Steelers have had 41. That was the numbers at the end of the first period of overtime. Bordelow seems to be getting a regular shift out there yeah, now. More Myers, more. The... Myers seems to have moved onto the wing as well to slow Doucette. He does skate well and he, he makes things happen. It's always hunting. He was hunting Ben O'Connor, yeah. who evaded just got him. his head up in time. Levi Nelson clears the puck away. Levi Nelson with a rare shift. Now, Valdix. Put this line back together now. There's a line that's created so much. Here's O'Connor, good save! By Ben Bowles again. It maybe got through him and climbed off a post. We'll have to check the replay on that one. But Dean Smith, the referee, spread his arms very, very yeah, wide. He's in a good spot. Bordelow is on his knees at centre ice. I don't know what's happened there. He's struggling to get up. Um, Walker and Bordelow have words with one another in a nice way, I think. We get a chance to look at this opportunity for the Steelers. Strength from Dow. That was a good save, yeah. Got low to it. And. Ben Bounds kept it out. You're listening to five live sports extra from the BBC. Bordelow goes down the tunnel. Owen Bradley. And yeah, he's replaced by Sean Bentavillio, who's been having a lot of work to his left leg. He was supposed to go backhand on the ice, Bordelow, because of the icing call, but obviously if he is injured, then he's not a doesn't have to go back out. Just looking down the tunnel, he's uh, bent over and seems to be stretching out. He definitely looks winded or, or something. It might just be pure exhaustion, but he's shaking his head and he doesn't look too good. 
Mind you, Bordelow on his knees is taller than most fully grown men. It's a massive, massive individual. Bentavoglio moves it to Mark Richardson offside as Cardiff come into the zone. Four minutes, 53 seconds gone in this second overtime period. Next goal wins, we're in sudden death and they're just going to keep going until they get a goal. And I look around this arena and there have been a few fans of the Nottingham Panthers who've left. But apart from that, there are very yeah, few empty seats. Hope nobody's got a late night flight back to Belfast. Right. They've probably gone for something to eat and going to come back anyway. So. <laughs> Here is Jace Coyle, brings it into the zone. He fires one of his backhand side in and then bounds. Just catches it, it was a half volley. Just allows it to come into his glove and makes a nice little play. I hope you have enjoyed the coverage of the Final Four weekend. It is something special in British ice hockey, the way they do the playoffs, with the semi-finals on the Saturday, and then the winner stays on to play on Sunday. Lewis, good strength, and the Cardiff Devils will cough possession up in their own zone, but then win it back with Joey Martin, and there could be a three-on-two break. Sheffield trying to funnel back. Lord gets it towards the back door. Could be a chance for Martin. It's tight. Fretter gets back, did so, so well to take that puck away. Here's Bentavoglio. Goes to the middle and Lord, who just shovels into the corner. And now Jace Coyle has time and space. He hides behind the net before releasing. Colton Fretter spins away from Haddad. Nice bit of skill. Now Sheffield will build in the zone. It's with Armstrong. Takes it deep to the goal line. Could be a chance for O'Connor, put towards net. Here's Matthew Wire thinking about the wraparound. Comes back the other way, though. Still Wire in possession. Has it back in that left-wing corner. Now Fretter absorbs the punishment. Sheffield still in possession. Put towards the net. Where's the puck? It hit a body, and now Fournier's going to bring it back the other way. Sheffield will step onto the ice. They only, had, they only had four on the ice yeah, and then one jumped like, on. Like, but O'Connor was waiting for the guy, waiting for, I don't know who it was, to make a change. I'm not sure that was the right call, I don't know, I need to see it again, but... If he's off the ice, it's not offside. Well, too many men on the ice potentially could be the call here. And wouldn't it be a controversial one in overtime? Oh, we're we talking about potentially offside? Yeah. Okay. We're crossed up for a second. I just looked at the reaction from the Steelers bench. And they looked very, very they concerned. They felt it was the wrong call, I think. Cardiff have it. They're trying to build something here. It's chipped into the zone. Ben O'Connor will go and collect it. The Steelers defenseman spins and wants to go forwards. He loves to have the puck on his tape. Now he passes it. Robert Dowd moves it into the zone. One-handed shoots on the angle. It's turned aside. He was looking for bits and pieces. And now he can collect those scraps as he tries to move it inside. Dowd gets hit hard by Brian. Brian was coached by Paul Thompson a couple of years ago. Also played against you, didn't he, in the World Championships last year? It's Fitzgerald, dumps the puck off to Debian, who overskates. Now Walker steps to the inside, still Walker. Back to Debian, he's on his own, can't afford to not get the shot through here. Does get a shot through. There is a chance for Fitzgerald, it falls towards Walker. The shot goes up in the air, doesn't reach the net. Sheffield again, well played by Nilsson. Looked like that went no, out of the that. zone. You've, you got a better view than me. Yeah, the puck's got to come all the way out and it didn't. Cardiff just clear. Sheffield have got the bit between their teeth right now. They look the team with more legs. Here is another chance. It's a move from Nilsson. Nilsson pulls it back into the slot. It's turned away again. Jonathan Phillips behind the net. Now here's Hagos moves to the middle, shoots this one. Well played, Ben Bounds. He didn't cheat at no. all as he moved across. That's what Hagos was hoping. He just started to lean just to open up that left-hand side. 
And he kept that big body. He's a tall boy, Ben Rounds. And that has certainly helped. The fans start to cheer. Still 5-5 five, five on Five Live Sports Extra. We're going to stick with this until, until the very end. We're into the fifth period, the second period of overtime. Ten goals oh, shared, oh, and now oh. there's going to be a chance, two on one. Haddad has a man with him, Haddad moves to the middle, comes oh. off the defence, but skate goes wide. It was Coyle. And now oh. Sheffield going to go the other way. Out comes Bounce to play it, he's got to make a good job of this. Under pressure from Fretter, he does just that. Chances at either end as defensive breakdowns happen, and then offside against the Cardiff Devils, and we get another break in play. I think that's that, uh, that two on one there was, I think the defenseman tried to step up and make the play and got beat. That's what opened up the lane. Sometimes I think there's a coaching staff will talk about using the dots as a, as a guideline. Keep inside the dots, keep inside the dots. And, you know, if the guy wants to come to that, he's, he's got to get by you. You're going to meet him in the middle somewhere. So if you get beat here, that's what opens things up further down the ice. Four and low back out there for the Cardiff Devils. Myers, board low. And Bryant comes in, makes a huge, huge hit. The Steelers try and clear it away. That would have been a painful blow as well. It was Ben O'Connor who took it in. Steelers try and clear oh. this one away. David Phillips gets it out of the zone. The Cardiff have to reset themselves. It's they, though, now who've got the bit between their teeth. A good change from them. Bordelow walks in, misses the net short side. Then he's going to come and try and make contact. Sheffield just get it out of the zone. Guillaume Debien. Cardiff, they're making some clever changes in the second period. Their bench is closest to the Steelers' offensive zone. As Martin takes it in again. Can they get this little chance out in front? Falls towards Martin, blocked in front. Steelers don't know where it is. Cleared away by Walker. And safely, he sends it down the ice. Be no icing call. Debien puts a real shift in to get there. And now the Steelers come in. They've got men over. Walker's shot deflects. And that goes high into the meshing. We go downstairs, Owen Bradley. It staggers me that these players are still going. Uh, Sean Bentavolo in particular, every time he comes back to the bench, you can see the grimace on his face, the devil's forward. He's having work constantly with the physios pretty much every time he gets back here. Andrew Lord, the player coaches, they're desperately trying to pass on instruction as much as he can, while also getting his breath back. We've seen Matthew Myers skate back to the bench and slam his stick on the glass in frustration because he was desperate for a line change. It's that sort of atmosphere down here on the Cardiff bench. In contrast to Sheffield, where at least in the last period they were all uh, sitting down and, and maintaining, I dare say, their composure. The Cardiff players are, for the most part, all on their feet all the time. Only one or two exceptions, as yet more sports energy drink is delivered from the locker room up to the bench. Something they don't want to run out of right now. Devils break forward. It's with Joey Haddad. Hagos tracks him every step of the way. Here's Fitzgerald. Leads Hagos, who breaks into the zone. Hagos looking for a pass to the middle. Stops and checks. Good play by Haddad defensively. Steelers go on a line change. What a great bit of work by Jared Hagos in the corner. He's got two devils with him, and the puck's still there. And he's had it for 15, 20 seconds. He's allowed his teammates to get off the ice. And he's going to be shattered. He can barely skate to the bench. Got nothing left. Cardiff clear to neutralise, and now the Sheffield Steelers will try and break in. It's Franson. Now a chance to shoot. This one's low. Great stick save. It was Fretter again. He's had four or five good opportunities. Matthew Watt finds Fretter. Watt and Fretter combine on the boards. 48 falls on top of Fretter. Watt goes for a change. Here is Fretter again. It comes off his tape. Then he steals it back. <laughs> and now he sees some open eyes to skate into. He's at the end of his shift right now. He's at the end of his shift and he's absolutely done. He's going to stay out there, though. Cardiff, though, going to break in. They try and push this one goalwards. Saric puts up the roadblock. Sheffield try and use the boards to clear. It comes down in front again. Saric again using his feet to block possession. There's another shot on goal that was turned aside. Nine minutes remaining in this. Second period of overtime. This game started four hours ago. 
Long one goes in. Mustakovs turns it away. Sheffield get it out of the zone, and now they break in with Robert Dowd, who's still got plenty of energy. Takes it deep, stops and checks. What are his options here? Guillaume Debien will collect again. Cardiff, though, just blocking the middle. Now they can walk in. It's David Phillips with the move onto his forehand, onto his backhand side. Sheffield still have possession as Valdix will get a second chance. Back it goes to Ben O'Connor, shoots this one, five hole. And Bounds closes the door, he shoots everything. Yeah, yeah he stayed square, got all of it. And I don't know if O'Connor realised he had a... On a line change, that guy coming off the bench would have been a really good option for him. Steelers fans stand and applaud at the end of every shift. The Devil fans are doing something pretty similar. But you get the high-class tennis matches that go four hours. And we're getting somewhere into a five-setter and then some. <laughs> Maybe we're at 10-8 in the fifth right now. Here's Debian. Debian walks in again. His shot is deflected. Culligan, who definitely has taken a lot of ice time away from Josh Batch. Uh, he's been asked to replace him. Fitzgerald uses his body again on Asselin. Sheffield don't clear the zone, though. Lewis scored a massive goal yesterday. Debbie End does a great job, and now Steelers could break away the other way. The pass in the middle was weak, though. It was one-handed. Devils just shut things off, and now they can come into the offensive zone. And what have they got here? The shot. Stick save by Mustakovs. It was Ulmer. Bordelow continues to make big hits after big hit. And every single shift. Steelers will just launch this one long. Cardiff will push it away to Doucette. Doucette goes backwards to Fournier. To Scott Hotham on the right side. Now it's helped into the zone again. Bordelo goes in hard on the boards. I don't know whether he's going to be all right there. He's got up and he is okay. It's a really nasty fall. I'm not sure what he tripped over as Steelers with Jonathan Phillips. Burst on the outside, he's got a man with him. Can he put it out in front towards Hagos? What a great defensive play that was. To get it out of the zone, Scott Hotham did just enough. Here is Saric pushing forward. Ferrara gets it into the zone. Steelers still trying to extend their bench whenever they can. You've got to, I suppose. Here's Armstrong. Chase Coyle jumps in. Tries to play it round those boards now. Matthew Wilde loses out on the boards, and Cardiff are going to skate away with it. 6.20 remaining, still tied at five in this second overtime period. These players continue to put shift after shift together. 40 or 50 seconds at a time. Here's Fretta walking in, snaps this one into the body. And Sheffield, to me, seems to be shooting the puck more. Yeah, I think um, that's coming. Kind of the way the game, the longer the game goes on, the less guys obviously have got the legs to kind of drive wide and, and try and take pucks to the net. I think if you're going to take shots from the outside, from the top, you're going to try and get at least get guys going to the net, if not for traffic, just in case there's any rebounds. Face off deep in Cardiff territory, Andreas Valdix punched over it. Face off won brilliantly though by Ulmer for Cardiff. So much respect for all of those players out there who have just put everything in. Here's Levi Nelson for the Sheffield Steelers. Cuts to the middle. Nelson scores! The Sheffield Steelers are the playoff champions! Levi Nelson goes top shelf, and Cardiff's Grand Slam dreams are over. Great shot coming in off his off wing. The, the, put, the, the way it got turned over. Cardiff's D-men were a little high, maybe. It just gave Nelson a little bit of room just to take a step to the middle. Short side upstairs over the... I think Bounds definitely got a piece of it, but couldn't get, in, couldn't get enough to stop it going in the net. What a goal from Levi Nelson. A championship-winning goal from Levi Nelson. And the fans stand, the players go to celebrate with them. They lean over the glass, they high-five. Cardiff Devils players go and stand by their goal. 
kit is strewn all over the ice. And in a few moments, the players will go to center ice. And they will go, and they'll all shake hands because as much as they've battled, as much as they've been out there, have done everything they possibly could. They, they respect each other massively. Yeah, yeah, obviously tough to take for Cardiff right now. Um, but, you know, it's, it's an empty feeling, but after the season they've had, they can be proud of what they've achieved and hold their head up high. And same goes, Sheffield came out winners today. These two have been neck and neck all year. It's been, um, it, was a, it was a fitting final to, to, to the season, really. Let's go down the ringside. Levi Nelson is doubled over. He's with Owen Bradley. Levi, you can hardly stand up. How was that oh, feel? Man. It's unreal, man. I can't describe it. Oh, I'm, I'm battling right now, but, you know, just pushing through it. The guys were unreal. It's just what a feeling to finally beat Cardiff. Well, let you shake hands. Levi Nelson, the man who won the title for the Sheffield Steelers. He's doubled over in pain and he's going to go and he's going to go shake hands with, a met, with as many of the players as possible. He's absolutely in bits. I don't know what particular ailment it is, it might be everything. Yeah, general body area, I think. <laughs> Anywhere between yeah. just the, the, hair the way he's killed over, yeah. It has been, in my memory, this has been one of the best finals that yeah, I've seen. I, I mean, it'd be tough to find anyone who's going to disagree with that. Great to see the two goaltenders embracing Ben Bounds and Irvin Smustakovs, who missed out on the playoffs in his first spell in Sheffield. He was part of the league title winning side back then. Yeah, talking to, to his teammates this year, said he, the last couple of months he's been outstanding and some nice has kept them in games and given them just given them a chance to win, which is what you can hope or what you need from your goalie. Loads of players down there on the ice. Let's go down to uh, to Owen. And with the Steelers captain, Jonathan Phillips, just put this into words. Oh, that's unreal. That is the best feeling ever after the first period. And then we battle, we battle so hard through these playoffs. We battle so hard all season, especially against Cardiff. They've been unreal. And we've put them up second best so many times. We're, tonight we were determined. And I, I think that just shows the effort tonight. Incredible effort from, from both teams to go so deep into overtime. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we didn't know when it was going to end. We were prepared to carry on defending, carry on pushing. We knew our energy levels weren't going to drop, and we kept going and going and going. We were positive the whole time, and I mean, what a great game of hockey. And on a special day for you, the day you break the all-time appearance record. Ah, uh, so we don't even think about that. Lifting trophies with the team is way better. Just a word by Levi Nelson, he could barely stand at the end when he scored. Oh, he goal. was unreal. He had to take so many shifts off towards the end, and then he comes up and Levi does that. Uh, unreal. Unbelievable. Go and enjoy it. Thank you. Jonathan Phillips down there, going to lift another trophy for the Sheffield Steelers. We'll get some more reaction down on the ice. Owen Bradley is going to speak to the winning coach, Paul Thompson, very, very shortly. You've been on both sides of this. Can you just try and describe the difference out there be between what the Sheffield Steelers fans are doing and what the, the, the Cardiff Devils oh, players are feeling? Yeah, it... it uh, the Hold that thought, let's go down ringside. We've got Paul Thompson. I'm joined by the Steelers coach. Uh, that was incredible, Paul. What a game, both teams. Phenomenal. Uh, an effort from the Devils, who've had a phenomenal year. And our full respect goes to them, but, you know, Levi Nelson, he's got, he should have had a knee ligament operation, and uh, he's playing through the pain barrier the last five, six weeks for us, and he goes and gets the winner, and that, that typifies the spirit, and I'm so proud of that group today. You seem to try to extend your bench to try and use everybody you possibly could to get through. Yeah, uh, when you're going into five periods, game 74, I think, or whatever it is, You've got, to, you've got to trust your players, and I trust my players. You battled Cardiff all season. How does it feel to beat them right at the end? Well, I said to them before the game, I was sick and tired of seeing the Cardiff Devils raise trophies in front of us, and, but I want them to feel what it's like. But, you know, all credit. I mean, they, they've had a terrific year. 
they've done a terrific job there, Todd Kelman and Lordo, and uh, I applaud all their players and staff because they've had a fantastic year. And we just have to know finally, what did you say to the players to get that response to come out in the second period and play like that? I can't say it on here. <laughs> Paul, thanks for your time. Your former coach, Paul Thompson, Ashley, um, giving his views. Uh, we've just seen a wonderful moment here as well. Sheffield Steelers have won the Elite League playoff title there, crowned the end of season champions. And, and the interesting thing for me is that there's been a good old battle between the beer can fans <laughs> uh, and the Steelers bench all weekend. And the players have gone and given them cans of beer. Yeah. Lovely touch. Plenty of high fives as well. Let's go back down ringside. Uh, Owen Bradley has got another Sheffield Steeler with him. Uh, I'm joined by Ben O'Connor and double OT, a first for the Elite League. Unbelievable. I mean, they've been fantastic all year. It's been us and them all year. And uh, what a game of hockey to watch. What a, what a benchmark for the, for the English game. Uh, fantastic game. And you know what? This is what this weekend's all about. And I'm just glad to bloody beat them this year. <laughs> You know, it's, it's been a good year. They've won it twice with the league and in the cup, so it's our turn now. Tell us what you were all feeling and thinking on the bench as first OT finished and second OT went on. Tiredness. A couple guys falling down with cramps and barely skate. And, you know what? But you just got to keep it simple. The ice is bad. It's been a lot of hockey. You got to keep it simple. And what a goal to finish it by Levi. And just a word on Levi, who could barely stand up at the end. That he was one of the guys who wasn't even going to play in overtime with the cramps, and he uh, he pulled it out the bag. He's a warrior, and just so happy. Uh, words can't explain it. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you very much, buddy. It's Ben O'Connor speaking live here on Five Live Sports Extra and the BBC Sport website. We're going to stay with it for the trophy presentations. I wonder whether Owen maybe can grab a quick word with Rod Saric in what's going to be his final game of hockey when he re-signed for the Sheffield Steelers. He, he said, I've signed for the good bit. I've signed for the bit where you pick up trophies. I think that's been just about fair enough as he's done this. The Cardiff Devils are going off the ice. This has been a wonderful season for them. Yeah, I mean, just, the quest, just going back to what you were saying before, is that just the two, the two different sides, obviously, if you're on Cardiff side of things right now, we, we just want to get off the ice as quick as you can. Um, you shake hands, you, you kind of have your conversations, but you, it, it hurts. Obviously, losing hurts, and, and it's not somewhere you want to be, but it's what, you know, it, it, it hurts for a reason, and the next time you come back, you don't want that feeling again, and that's what they'll be thinking about. Um, but, you know, again, they can, they can be proud of their season and hold their heads up because they've been... been on the whole, the best team this year. Well, as they make the final preparations to hand out the Elite League winner's trophy, the Sheffield Steelers players continue to stand around. Let's go back down ringside, and Owen is with Rod Sarich. Big smile on his face. Rod, I bet you don't regret coming back now. It was a, it was a great decision. <laughs> Halfway through second overtime, my... My heart stopped a bit. I thought maybe it was the wrong decision, but oh, I'm glad I got the phone call. I'm really glad. It seemed as though the coach used you more and more as the game went on. Yeah, well, I think some of us weren't penalty killing as much during the game, and when you get to double overtime, everyone's got to play. Your top guys have logged so many minutes that you have to spread it around a bit. And, and our guys all stepped up, so that's off the card that day. It was a hell of a battle. We'll never forget this game, but it's a big one for us, real big one. Is this the most special way to win it in double OT? Well, it doesn't get much more dramatic. And then to get here the way we did through the playoffs, uh, semifinals, I'll, 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 I won't forget it. Won't forget it. Is this the way to go out? Is this it? I think this is, this is it. I'm selling my skates. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks for that. It's over and out from him. Uh, a, a big teammate of yours for, for a lot of years in Sheffield. Uh, do you, do you feel good? I'm selling my skates. He said that before. I don't believe him. <laughs> it must be nice, though, to see somebody, obviously, that you, you get a lot yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, interesting that Rod and uh, Sarich and uh, Coyle played together. They didn't neither. Well, Roddy obviously started the year there and then and then had it kind of kind of retired. And, and Coyle was a late or mid-season addition. Um, yeah, they both came in and done a really, really good job for Sheffield. Um, 
But Roddy's done. I mean, that's all Roddy's done since he's been been in Sheffield. He's been someone you can go to and and, uh, and rely upon. Let's go back downstairs. Who have you got with you, Owen? That patrols with us. You've got the champion's hat on, and, and you earned it the hard way. That was the hard way. That's right. That was a great game. Both sides played a great game. It was back and forth all night, and couldn't be happier right now. What are you thinking? What are you feeling in overtime as it keeps going and keeps going? I think you just kind of go back to the old mus muscle memory, you know, playing the game for so long and try not to, uh, you know, just do, do, do what you, you do for the team. Everybody's got their own job. Just do what you do for the team and have fun with it. And, and uh, you know, nobody wants to make a mistake, but you got to keep pushing. You got to keep pushing. And I think we, uh, we stayed in pretty good shape. We're a pretty fit team, so it, uh, it paid off tonight. It's been you and Cardiff all year. You lost to them in the league. You lost to them in the Challenge Cup. It must be so sweet to, to win them on, on the final game. You nailed that one. That, that, it is sweet to finally raise the cup in front of them instead of them doing that to us. You know, we uh, it's painful to see that, and, you know, we got her done, and it feels great. Congratulations. Thank you. A proper hockey player's smile. Jack, Zach Fitzgerald with no front teeth. So the players are going to go and receive uh, all of their own uh, commemorative medals uh, as, as their champions here. And then it's going to fall to Jonathan Phillips on the day that he breaks the Sheffield Steelers appearance record to be the man. But what a goal it was yeah, to was win it. it. Yeah, I mean... Been a oh, lot of yeah, goals, well. uh, yeah, a lot of goals, and, and uh, especially for a final. But that was uh, was fitting to be the winner, I think. Well, the players are continuing to collect their mer medals. Armstrong, who was penalised early on in this game, part of scoring on the power play. Robert Dowd grabs the bottles of champagne and he dishes them out liberally. He's going to be on GB duty soon. Another trophy in his career as the Sheffield Steelers, of course, now go level with the record number of playoff wins with the Edinburgh Murrayfield franchise, which is 10 in their relatively short history, which is amazing. And for Paul Thompson, it's the first playoff title since you won the Grand Slam. Yeah, I mean, probably probably for him, this is this is probably who it means the most to. Um, it's been a long wait for him, and there's been, there's been semi-final defeats, there's been final defeats along the way, but kind of, uh, what, 12 years later? 12 years what, 12 later. years later, yeah. He got there again, so well-deserved. The man who scored... The game-winning goal, Levi Nelson, will receive his medal. And now all that awaits is that big trophy to be handed over. Levi Nelson gets the fans going. All of a sudden, he's moving a little that easier. knee looks OK to me. <laughs> a couple of beers help. So here's the moment, then, for the Sheffield Steelers. Jonathan Phillips steps forward. A little touch of his cap. And once again, in his testimonial season, the boy who was born in Cardiff gets one hand on the trophy. He looks at the photographers. And Phillips now knows... As he raises it above his head, the Sheffield Steelers are the playoff champions 2017. They did it the hard way. A Levi Nelson goal in double overtime. Enough to see them end the season with silverware. A kiss as well before he turns it over to his teammates. The Steelers have done it again. Yeah, we did say it was gonna, it was gonna take a piece of brilliance, I think, and it's a great shot. And uh, I said it a minute ago, it'd be fitting of um, to be the winner and, and of this game, which has been 
a great spectacle to be here and, and, and a great, great advert for the game. Well, we'll get a little bit more reaction from down at rink level very shortly with Owen Bradley before we sign off on this broadcast. Uh, you've been watching on the BBC Sport website, the BBC Sport app, and also potentially listening on Five Live Sports Extra. Wherever you are in the world, we hope that you've enjoyed it. These, these players are from all over the place. Matthew Wire from Quebec in Canada. And he gives it to a fellow French-Canadian, Guillaume Debian, who arrived mid-season last year from Slovenia. And those players will want to share it as Paul Thompson gets dunked. Ben O'Connor and Robert Dowd are giving the Gatorade bath. The celebrations will continue long into the night. Let's go back downstairs and hear from Owen Bradley. And with uh, Robert Dowd, who I think he's just played his part in dousing the coach, uh, tell us about what Paul Thompson did for you tonight. Oh, it was it was great by everybody. Everybody. My apologies brother. for the language. You're live on BBC Radio. Sorry, go on, sorry, go on. Sorry. Everybody brought their all tonight, and uh, we knew what to do. Once it got to overtime, there, uh, there was only going to be one winner. In my opinion, everybody was uh, everybody was flying. And we, we knew what we've been in this situation before, and we knew what we got to do. How sweet is it to beat Cardiff after the season, the battles you've had with them? It's so sweet. They, they've been a great uh, credit to them. They've been unbelievable all year. They've been a fantastic team, and. Uh, they deserve their trophies, but uh, it, it felt all the sweeter pipping this last one, winning your last game before the summer. And is the sweetest way to do it, just like this, double overtime? Absolutely. I mean, it's a cruel way, cruel way to end the game, but someone's got to win. I'm glad it's us. Well, but thanks for your time. Thank you. Delighted that he said pucking. <laughs> <laughs> Only works in an ice hockey context. Well, I think that just about does it here from the National Ice Centre in Nottingham. Sheffield are going to pose for their team picture. And we hope you've enjoyed every moment of this final four weekend as the British domestic ice hockey season signs off and will sign off with the news that the Sheffield Steelers have beaten the Cardiff Devils in double overtime by six goals to five to be crowned the Elite League Playoff Champions 2017. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening across as well. Thank you.